Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calderness. This episode we're going to be talking about the ooh ah tarot card review, going over all the cards that we've seen so far, which is almost all of them, if not all of them. Going over some listener questions and making some custom dials for the boys' characters. This is episode 429. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the 100 instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clips is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can use code DIAL5 to get 5% off all your singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Calder Ness. I already said that. Joining me, like always, in the studio is your Dial H for Hero Clips champion, Simeon Bruce. What's going yeah, on, Simeon? it's me. Oh, there he is. Yeah. It's me and it's Milo. Milo, do you have anything to say to the lovely people? No, he does not. He's just staring deeply into my eyes. If you just, like, you edit in, like, some words from Bolt or something, like some animated dog movie. Speak. It's like, oh, wow. Look at that. Speak. Good job. Milo can talk. Do it. Speak. Speak English. It's like Charlotte's Web animal talking going on. Over there. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, well, that was close. That I don't know if he's a big English. fan of that, Simeon. And just like put a mic in someone's face like that. You yeah. Know? When people. He put his face in my face first. It. It's his fault. Oh, did he? Yeah. He's, he's, like, What's like, up? he's all What's up good? in my business. Anyway, what made you happy this week, Simeon? <laughs> <laughs> Flawless uh, so what, transition. Yeah. So, what made me happy this week? Um, Husker football started, which means uh, like oh, every year you. for the last couple of years. Uh, I'll be getting a fun little pay bump every week, uh, going to the, post the scores and do all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, it's like the most money I can ever possibly make in like hourly wage. So okay, you know, it's just like probably unless I become CEO of some mega corp, it's probably going to continue to be that way for the rest of my life because it, it takes me like 30 minutes to do it. And they pay me quite a bit for those 30 minutes. Oh, well, nice. So, yeah. That Huskers money. Yeah, it's actually go. Blue Cross Blue Shield money, but... Oh, is it? Oh, okay, yeah. interesting. If the Huskers paid yeah. me, I'd, I'd demand more after they spent $10 million to go to Ireland for some reason. It obviously wasn't that. to get, like, a winning spirit or anything like yeah. that, because they Ooh. lost their first game. Ow, dang. Oof. That's pretty savage coming from a Nebraskaite. Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah. Nebraska. That's wrong. Yeah. Way wrong. <laughs> All right. Sweet. So you're messing around with your magnets again. Or magnets. Even. Yeah, my big old magnets. And uh, you can magnets. see those magnets if you become a patron. Um, That's there's true. There's a video of me explaining magnets. How do they work? And uh, showing you like my, my day-to-day, uh, not day-to-day, but Saturday-to-Saturday, I guess, job. Oh, shell. All right. <laughs> All right, Hans. Um, made me uh, happy this week we played our 10 of swords x of swords x of x 10 of 10s uh, op kit month one we had a bunch of people though so we didn't do battle royales which was a darn shame instead we did one booster of the op kit and then one booster of the main set we just played three rounds of sealed we had 15 people at the venue we had a lot of folks which is really cool we had one new player Potentially new player. The kids brought him to name Noah. So hopefully he starts playing the game. Hopefully he gets interested. Hopefully he likes it. You know, grow the community. We ended up having two people go 3-0. My team, not great. But also pretty solid and pretty fun, if you ask me. I played Solemn at 85. I played the OP kit, or OP set, excuse me, Iska at 55 with the Pogger Pog sword. Did not play Pogger Pog, but I did like giving her Giant Reach 3. I played Red Root of the Forest without his sword. And then, because I was literally needed five points. Sorry. Had to get that 300 cut, baby. And then we had one Cuckoo, which was awesome. And then we had Tarot. So we had two probs plus a, you know, yeah. ones per game. The Cuckoo, crit you hit, get a crit which line it starts on? I believe so. That's at least how I played her. Yeah. 
It's pretty uh, solid 15 no, points. I'm sorry. Season. Yeah, like, or it's great, royal, so whichever. It's, it's rough, right? It's like in a battle royal, you're like, ah, dang. Like, like I'm not going to complain yeah, about you a problem. You want to get stuck with it. You don't want to pick you it. You know? So it's, it's really weird once you combine the OP kit set or, like, you can tell the OP set is not necessarily made for normal 300 sealed. Because all the generics are, like, 40 points, 75 points. The point filler is a little rough in the OP kit set. As opposed to the main set, there's a lot of 25 point, 20 point, you know, ish around there. Low point costed figures to help fill out points on teams and stuff, you know? Except for, of course, Stepford Cuckoo is the only 15 point, obviously, thing in the OP kit set. But yeah, so it was kind of interesting combining those two. But yeah, playing my boy Solemn, playing Stepford Cuckoo, playing uh, Redwood of the Forest, playing Iska. Had some other stuff in there. I think Gorgon was my one leadership I pulled, so I was like, ah, I gotta get Gorgon on there. 30 points, just slapped him in there. It was all right. I went two and one, lost to Kevin. Kevin had Genesis, the super rare from the OP kit. She was impossible to beat. I would hit her twice, and then she would flurry, exploit, you know, steal energy up two clicks, kill one of my figures. Yeah. And I was like, dang, this is nasty. I don't, I don't think I'm taking her out. Like as like I hit her hard twice, and I think I missed the first attack, which is rough. I think if I would have hit both attacks each time, obviously, obviously, then she would be dead. But uh, there, there came a point where I was like, I think I'm just gonna ignore her now, which you can't even do because she never has action tokens on a plus two willpower roll. You know, it's pretty dang good. So yeah, lost that game. I'm not upset about losing that game. The rest of the game's pretty fun. Uh, we're gonna have the video of that up sometime this week on dial h i've got video of all three of my games you can see how poorly i played against kevin and how sort of okay i played against uh the opponents in the games i actually won so that was pretty fun anyways we have a really fun episode for you guys we're gonna be going over all of the tarot cards we're gonna be ranking them a little one through ten action you now we'll talk about the artwork a little bit since the artwork i think is one of the cooler driving factors about the tarot yeah, card one of the bigger selling points in my opinion too yeah like they look are just they display really nicely and as you know people that like to display their hero clicks and stuff it's really cool to have something to display so let's just jump right into the tarot card set review a tarot card set two different sets but you know what i mean. yeah i mean you're starting off with the pentacles is that correct or arena no no yeah i can start off with ace the ace of pentacles ace of pentacles so we're gonna go in order we're gonna do all of the speed powers which is the the pentacle ones and then we're gonna do the swords which of course is the attack power then we'll do the cups which i believe is the defense power and then the wands which is the damage power and then we'll get to the major arcanas so first up ace of pentacles all of these just on the offset they cost zero points building a deck if you want to know how to build a deck uh, we've talked about it before but it has to be at least one of every suit at most two of every suit and at least one major arcana at most four major arcana so that means minimum five maximum 12 because you can have four major arcanas and then two of each suit so that's basically the building blocks of this and then yeah they, they affect you and your opponent so go into this with that in mind that this is going to also affect your opponent so ace of pentacles this is a flurry thing. So when characters use flurry and miss one or both attacks after resolutions, they may make a close attack, giving a lot of characters a triple flurry. Like, all you have to do is miss one, and then you get to make a third attack. Um, obviously, you don't want to miss either of your attacks, but uh, oh, the character I think that I'd like to potentially put on team, that I, a character that I play often enough to, that I think this would affect... Um, is Eddie Guerrero, who's, of course, got oh, there you go. Flurry, but instead he can use it three times. So if he just misses one of those three, he gets to make another close attack. Um, yeah, pretty fun. Honestly, this card being played with, like, a team that's heavy on, like, some charge flurry pieces, pretty solid. I, I give this card, as far as building potential, I'd give this card, like, a higher ranking, like an 8 out of 10. I think that this is one that you could honestly see on a lot of aggressive teams. Um, drawing this when you have, like, Sky Tyrant in play or something. Oh, yeah. That'd be really Definitely. Like, competitively, casually, Flurry is a power that's always good to have. 
and uh, making it better by giving you a third attack if you miss. It's even, yeah, even better sure. than good. I think I really like this with uh, Sif. She oh, sure. has the whole, if you the roll like attack. a one, you know, she can get the free attack if you roll a, a one or whatever. Now she already has Flurry. Make it all sorts of free attacks. I think this would be a sick card with Sif. That'd be my, that'd be my go-to, I guess. Yeah, yeah no. Dope no card. What do you think of the art, Simeon? Um, the art on this one, not like crazy. Nah, it's nothing special. I haven't read the comics, so I don't know what this exact scene's from, but it's like a it's like a tree oh. house that looks kind of like an A. A little, uh, little kids next door tree house action. Yeah, it's, it's nothing it's nothing crazy. I don't it's know like exactly under a five for. for me on art. It's not it's not nuts. Because compared to some of the other ones, it's just like eh. Yeah. Other than like the background stuff, which I already think is cool. Um, yeah. the actual art is just it's it's all right i think um so then we've got the the two. Ooh. Oh, look at that artwork hmm. that's incredible Ooh, the back of the car the back of the card uh, the two pentacles a character that can use leap climb is given a move action and moves five squares or less after resolutions they may make an attack pretty cool there's a lot of uh you know it gives people leap climb better charge depending on their speed value which is nice I guess instantly I think of the, uh, ah, what is his name? He's got a Danger Room Construct. He's got Leap Climb. He doesn't have good values, but him, I guess. Oh, I mean, Braun Strowman. Sebastian Shaw. That's exactly, <laughs> we did it. We did it. Yeah, That was pretty close. Okay. They're like the yeah. same dude. Yeah. I mean, this is this a lot like right. the, we'll see the, the phasing one here in a bit. It's almost exactly the same as that. Um. Yeah, there's like a few characters out there with printed leap climb. Uh, if they don't have leap climb combined with charge already, then this gives them like a pseudo charge, I guess. It's I just, nice. It's not. It's not a crazy card. No, you know, it's like a five. It's yeah. If you build for it, cool. What's crazy is like you can build for it, but like this is one of the few. Well, not one of the few, but this is one of the ones where, if played like randomly, you don't like min max your tarot deck this one almost always will do nothing for whatever the two players are playing yeah i could see that too there will be a lot well of times we're, where... we're already in combat i don't really need to move um or it's like oh, i'm too far away even if i did move five yeah it's very situational it's as yeah, this, this one's pretty uh iffy yeah all right the three of pentacles uh so this one is for the same thing but for phasing teleport so if you use phasing teleport move five squares or less after resolutions they may make a close attack i actually think that phasing teleport tends to be a printed power more often than leap climb so this one actually might be a little bit better um you know that say legacy you apocalypse has a click of phasing uh you know there's that flurry prime vision that has a uh, phasing flurry that's whatever good. nutso stuff probably what i think would be really fun like casually it'd be like a low-key tv show they all yeah. have phasing you know yeah, that'd be kind of fun a lot of them have phasing you yeah. know the tesseract i mean obviously i don't I, the fun thing is like when this card drops as long as you have a character that has phasing and they're not double action tokened you can activate it it like yeah essentially gives you a reposition with a close attack or it's not even have to be a close stack. Just make an attack. So yeah, make an attack. Yeah, so. five right. squares and then make an attack. So, like someone that could really benefit from this is the bottom dial, um, Strange Supreme, who gets Ooh, like phasing with the wave. Very true. Yeah, you really don't want to be tied up. You want to make range attacks, but you also want to make attacks. So you don't want to phase for no reason. So yeah, being able to phase and then also do that would be pretty solid. Wouldn't <laughs> be like the worst like that. thing that you can do. That's really cool. I'll give this one like a six. I'm gonna assume that you're giving the. Did you say what you gave the leap climb one? It was like a ice, like four or five or something. Yeah, very, I'll give this bad. one slightly above that because at the end of the day, it's still just like a worse move at an attack, but it's at least like phasing at least just like ignores all terrain kind it's of just thing. Better, yeah, phasing just being a better power. Four pentacles. Eight characters have earthbound neutralized until your next turn, even if this card is not in play. Yeah, this is just like Earthbound Neutralize was better. This would be a way better card, but as it stands, Earthbound Neutralize is pretty bad. It doesn't do doesn't do enough to actually feel Earthbound and Neutralized. You know what I mean? Oh, so, this card is just not saying it, Chief. 
it's not there for me. This is also like oh, it's better than Leap Climb one, maybe. I this is another like mid tier card. At the very least, it can always be used. No hit characters. I will say it'll also affect you. So that's like a big thing when you're putting this in your deck. Right. If you, you can really like want to yeah, not take yeah. the penalty from the earthbound. Um so again, like Earthbound does not take away the flight symbol. Uh you won't uh-huh. be able to use it for flying over outdoor blocking, elevated, uh, etc. But you can still move through hindering because that just doesn't stop movement at all anymore. Um yeah. so there's like a couple things. Like honestly, it's not as detrimental as it used to be getting earthbound. It's still something that like if you stick your opponent with it and like you're on like a higher elevation you can kind of mess them up but it's not as not as crazy as it used to be all right the five Ooh, we actually have a picture for this Ooh, one uh, art. so when a character uses charge they modify speed plus two um i think that's pretty good in casual that's good if you have like a yeah, lot of charge good. pieces a lot of like a lot of little characters a lot of like bystanders or uh, just like henchmen sort of things like that have charge or like some sort of charge adjacent thing like hellfire guards or something oh sure that's all like you know you pull this card Ooh, they modify speed that'd be plus so two. nasty that increases Optimus your reach or black heart, if you have like two three hellfire guards power action put them all in that click now they got plus two charge that would be pretty gross i like that that a lot yeah, yeah so that's I, a fun card i don't think it's great i don't think it's bad i think it's like it's about a six or a seven. Um, the artwork on this one is like an old man Logan and uh, Laura. Is that Kenny. Logan? I think so. I think it's like bald old man Logan. Was he was he bald? I oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know who else it could be. To be honest, I'm, yeah. I'm just assuming it's him, but I do All not know for up. sure. They're like trudging through the snow. This isn't yeah. really great art, I guess. It's not They're like They're both cool. bandaged up, which is not like something you normally see because they have the you know, like healing people. factor thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it doesn't really give me um, Arge plus two vibes, I guess. That's no. Me. Not this yeah. image, but oh. <laughs> the artwork is cool. They've got like stained glass. You'll see stained glass on quite a few I like of these. that. Yeah. Um, like in the background kind of thing, which is cool. But yeah, I give this one like a six or seven because it is it is very useful and it's very easy to build around. It's just not like, or it's easy to build with or slap on. Sure. It's just like oh, yeah. not exactly what you want to pull when you have like a charge piece always because there are some better ones out there that we'll see. Um, the next one is the six of movement. Six of Pentacles. A character uses mind control. After resolutions, they deal their printed damage value divided between all hit targets. This card's insane. If you pack a mind control and you put this on your team, this makes it instantly so much. I don't think that's Wolverine. Man, these are like the same people from the last one. I don't think that's Wolverine, Simeon. I don't yeah, know they, about that. They got to their destination. And now they got to their destination, and it's like Angel in a angel. suit. Yeah, yeah Eric, Eric Angel in a suit. Is like and they're like kneeling in front of him. This is a we yeah, this is a weird one. I assume he's mind controlling them, maybe. I don't know. I don't think that's a very archangelly power. This is again weird artwork that I'm like, it's it's not not beautiful, but it's just kinda like I don't get the vibe of the effect, I guess, yeah. with the artwork. I really need to get you know? around to like finishing this comic because <sighs> I think you gotta read the story. There's definitely there's I've seen a few missing. a few of the artwork panels. Are like almost directly like lifted from stuff in the oh, comics. Oh sure, um, like mind control. This thing with like Thanos is insane on a turn. Can oh, you imagine yeah. mind control and then deal printed damage against all the. So, um, I mean, he's only three, it turns I guess. Any so mind not control insane. piece into the rise and fall Exodus, essentially. Exodus, yeah, that's really good because yeah. it's like after resolution. Too, so like, uh, that after resolution's damage gets through stop clicks. Like it's not damage from true. attack, so it gets through stop clicks. Gets through. Uh, super senses reducers like i mean they can still reduce it they can't roll out of it i should say um yes but yeah it's it's a good effect and yeah real good dude it's really character that's got like a high damage value uh, like that danny moonstar with the triple mind control oh yeah she's good she won't do a ton of damage but you know yeah it depends but yeah not not with like a two or three or whatever she has but this is a super solid card I would, I'd give this thing like, like mind a, control teams 
in my day. Give this and, card like an eight, maybe yeah. a seven or an eight, like a real good, real solid. I think it's it's a card that definitely um, changes how a mind control team can work because it's essentially, you know, you're getting yeah. that free attack that you like mind controlled somebody, and then you're also splitting damage to them. So potentially, just you know, dealing your full printed damage to them if they don't have a reducer. All right, so then we have the seven. Uh, the seven is oh, no, not even not even the back of a card for this image. Dang, okay. Nothing, bro. Uh, characters can't use improved movement abilities. Characters that can use plasticity have free move at half speed. Pretty solid. Karian, Iron Man's best friend. Dude. Yeah, like I mean, considering you give him the cloak, usually yeah, yeah. Or he's gonna have gnarly, plasticity man. most of the time. Free move half speed um, is really, really solid for anyone. Anyone that has traded plasticity or even printed plasticity, uh, this is very good. And then also just making it so that other characters, I mean, it's not other characters, it's just characters in general, but uh, for all characters can't use improved movement abilities, so they can't use, like, free breakaway. If someone tries to phase away from you while you have plasticity, this is like any plasticity character's best friend. That uh, yeah. uncommon mystique, danger room mystique, who has plasticity. Uh, that's pretty pretty hard to get away when you have to roll a six, and that's your only option unless you also have plasticity. Um, yeah, yeah. Just it kind of guarantees you a turn of like lockdown, which I think is really good, and it especially the fact that it gets rid of the improved movement from like flight and uh, hypersonic and phasing, oh, true. especially phasing, because that's the one where you just, you know, break away. You don't even have to, like, roll it. Um, yeah, the fact that it gets rid of all of that kind of stuff is pretty solid. I give this one, like, a, I'm going to say, like, a 9, because I think this could make I agree. a lot of it's teams. Awesome. I think this is, like, one of the more impressive ones. Uh, denying people the use of improved movement is huge. Even just, like, if you don't have anyone with plasticity on your team, if you're up on, like, an elevated thing and you're away from the edge and you draw this card and all of a sudden no one can fly up there, they all have to, like, trudge up, like, the ladder or whatever, that's pretty solid. That's going to really slow down your opponent for at least one turn. And, yeah. Right. Eight of Pentacles. A boy forge on this one. Like that. He just knock back. You can knock back a character up to six squares instead of three that character can use Force Blast. They can choose the direction of the knockback. It's pretty neat. I think this is great with people that have the Force Blast is free type ability. And then being able to just choose knockback is really good. Especially it's like six squares away. So situational, I think if you build for it, it could be like a seven card, I would say. It's not nutty, but it can really mess up your opponent messing up the uh, positioning like that. I dig it. It's a fun card. I like knockback. I like having more knockback stuff. I miss knockback damage. People are like, what is that even? I'm like, you don't know. You don't understand. But yeah, so I dig this card. like it a lot. But also, my man Forge is on it. He's just sort of working on a little X symbol. That's it. It's nothing crazy. Again, no like crazy artwork going on here. Just Forge, chilling, vibing, looking like a Chad. No. That's it. Pretty cut dry card here. Yeah. What is he doing? Is he painting? Is he making the little X's? I don't know. Huh. Yeah. I think it's solid because it also works with like super strength, quake, stuff like so that. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, you don't get to choose like the direction of knockback, but. Oh, you man. Least that's that's pretty gross. Going up, charging, quaking, and then knock everybody back six squares. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. This is really dope. All right. Next up, we've got. Why do I want to say Kate Bishop? Is it Kate? Is pride. it Kate? Kitty? It's Pride. Hey, Pride. Pride. Who's Kate Bishop? Okay. That's right. <laughs> we talked about Kate. We talked about her a bunch, like on the, we did. the live we did stream. On that's live why. Stream. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kate Pride. Oh, Kitty Pride. Funny. With Lockheed on shoulder. So this is like, I'm assuming, pirate oh. ship esque kind of like pretty, background. I don't know. Pirate. Um, it looks like she was like a eclipsing online for free. Sun in the background, too, as well. Uh, so this is. When a character uses sidestep, they may move up to three squares instead of two. I'm going to give this one like a a three. Sidestep's cool, but sidestep already gives you... If it said, like, you get to move two instead of... Or you get to move four instead of two, that'd be kind of nuts. 
but getting like a plus one to your sidestep, I don't think really does anything crazy. I don't think this is a Man, card I ever going to really rate put. this higher than the leap climb card, though, right? I don't I think, think so because the leap climb no? card that's like free attack. If it was that's like, a, if it was mm. may move up to three and then make a close attack afterwards. So it was like I'm at least you know if oh. I sidestep next to somebody I get like a free attack. But like this is, I mean. Maybe I'm just misjudging it. I just don't think that adding a plus one to sidestep. Sidestep's real utility is, like, fine at two. I've, there's been very few times because the agree. foot elites could sidestep three, and I never found that to be, like, really good or anything. I was just oh, like, yeah, sure. it's handy to move guess, them because they have terrible speed. Put it that way. I guess that seems fine. This might be one you have to see in practice a little bit, maybe. I definitely think so. I'd have to try yeah. it out a few times because... On paper, as it is, I just... That's fair. No, that's fair. Nice. That was my For cat knocking down the uh, Disney oh. Plus box. I was like, so. what is happening? Yep. The cat. All right, we're at 10 of Pentacles. We're at, yeah, 10 of Pentacles. So uh, this is the uh, hypersonic one. Dang, this is intimidating. I feel, I feel belittled looking at this card, bro. I feel tiny. The character uses hypersonic speed and hits during the action. After resolutions, remove an action token from them. Oh, that's great. That's amazing. That's dope. Yeah, if you had a hypersonic speed dude, keep doing this each turn, baby. There's not a ton of hypersonic stuff in the meta. I mean, obviously, Skari and Iron Man can do it. So, like, if this card comes up on the beginning of your turn or your opponent's turn, whatever, then it's like, all right, well, I know what I'm picking. Also good for Apocalypse's... Uh, F bystander with hypersonic speed. You oh, know, yeah. if you're running hypersonic speed, maybe you run an old Golden Age, Silver Age Flash team that's got some hypersonic speed. It's a dope card. Ironically, I don't think there's an, a gladiator with hypersonic speed modern right now. Um Not due modern, to the no. benching the benching of powers. But uh and I think zombie <laughs> gladiator has it, but gladiator just stanced up and he's looking like two heads taller than old Jubilee and Shogo here. <laughs> We're just kind of hanging out, man. Gladiator's looking wide too. He's I'm I am intimidated. Yeah, it's, he's got yeah, all you that should confidence. Be posing on this, he's got a lot of confidence. What's going on with those, those hamstrings, though? I don't know, bro. Like a weird, a weird triangle split. I don't, I don't get the muscle definition alien, in, so. his, in his thighs right now. It's looking weird. Yeah, but he, he is an alien, so maybe is is this true? He's got different anatomy different. than you and I. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, at least. Uh all right, now on to the night. So this comes in month one, boosters only. Uh, when a character uses running shot, modify their speed, plus one. One of the more disappointing ones. I'm uh, sure. I guess this, it's trying to be balanced because charge is plus two and running shot's range, I guess. Yeah. Trying to balance that out. But So like this yeah. gives me the same kind of like vibe that the plus one to sidestep did, where I'm just like, man... If I like, it'll be so situational if I really need that plus one to running shot, and I don't have like a perplexer TK already like on the team, and then I also pull this card when I need it specifically, like the turn that I need it. It'll be so sure, situational. Yeah. I just don't see that ever putting this card on the team because how many times am I going to be like based and unable to like do a running shot and I draw this card, you know, without like breaking away or something? Um, it just seems seems like a lot of situations that like won't pop up but i'll I'll give this one a little bit better than the sidestep one because i do think you know moving attack getting modified is better than just sidestep getting modified so i'll say i'll give this one a three i'm probably never playing it uh sometimes i'm not mad if it gets pulled like randomly kind of thing but it's yeah, just it's a uh, hard it's, it's pretty just lackluster i would say not a great effect Oh, no crazy game swinging effect. No. It's a little bit of a sewing circle going on here with Mystique. Um, all right. So the Queen of Pentacles. Characters can only move in direct paths, diagonal, horizontal, vertical. You cannot change direction during the movement. This is really good. So uh, this can really mess up a team, I think. Oh, so, little Danny the Street action going on. Actually, this is pretty fun. Oh, so, yeah. I like this card. I like this card a lot. It's obviously... It depends when you pull it can be bad for you as well 
maybe if you have a lot of uh, TK, whatever, on your team, you're not worried about this one. More worried about really messing up your opponent. This obviously isn't going to stop like a Sky Tyrant or anything. Kind of depends on the map. Maybe if it's a real indoor movie around map, you know, if that's like kind of you know what you're picking, this can really mess up a Sky Tyrant in that case. So, you know, there's, it has uses. You kind of got to build for this card, but it pops off. Like it does keep you just from yeah. getting sky pirated or anything right away, then it's like a. And in I that know case, this was this was one of the ones know, um, seems... when we played no. like our our clicks busters. This was one of the ones that kind of messed me up for a turn. Cause... I would say I would say a six or seven on this one, like a yeah. better than average for sure. Nothing definitely nutty. depends if your team can deal with it. I think a team that yeah. can sidestep a lot, like obviously you can't have the sidestep card and play at the same time as this one, but if you can sidestep and then like do your charge or something if it doesn't mess you up as much or if you just sidestep yeah. out of your like opponent's line of whatever they can get to that might work too but yeah it is like a wonky card it's just i think it's better defensively early on than it is like towards the, like middle of the game kind of thing all right then we have the king of pentacles the final pentacle uh this is when a character is given a move action after resolutions, remove an action token from them. This is pretty cool. It's like the boom tube thing that uh, all of the JLU characters, all the, well, I should say, not all the of the JLU characters. JLU but, character. Yeah, the, the very specifically, uh, what were they? Yeah, Apocalypse, um, not New Gods, Dark Sides people. I don't yeah. know. Minions of Apocalypse, whatever. Uh, yeah, so the fact that this could be used in conjunction with other tarot cards, like your opponent drops like the, the Leap Climb or Phasing one, and then you drop this one, you could remove an action token and get a free attack. Like It's pretty oh, cool. true. I think this is... I don't know. Is this Moira? Is this Kate Pryor? That was, that was going to be my guess, was it was Moira. Yeah, yeah, it's not Kate, I guess. Her hair is too short, but... I don't know. Yeah. She's she's just sitting in a chair in front of like a big rectangle oh. squared. Is this uh, April O'Neil? <laughs> April O'Neil looking coat. Oh no, yeah, she got she's the yellow from coat. Jubilee, yeah. maybe. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, just reading a book. Yeah. So I guess it's a throne of a type, an office chair. So, it yeah. really is just an office chair though. It's got like the three little swervy wheels. Yeah. Funny. But that's that's right. it for the speed powers. Um, cool. Yeah, Tackle I'm gonna give this mechanical. one. I don't know. I'm gonna. I think it. It's good. So technically, when you give Vision Prime a move action, um, when you give him like phasing, that that is a move action. So after at, at resolutions, he could remove an action token. So like because mm -hmm. characters like that exist, I think this is good. Uh, I just don't think yeah. it's like so good that you'd put it on a lot of teams. So I'm gonna say like situationally, it's a five because like some teams real good, oh, like, right. other teams meh, not doing okay. anything. Okay, Ace of Swords character uses blades claws fangs instead roll 2d6s and choose one that uses the result if you build for this and everybody's got blades on your team you're running an Araco x-men warrior whatever type team then this card has to be on that team. being able to choose you know like it just gives you two shot two shots at a good blades roll so when you build for it this is an amazing card like it's like a an it's not insane because they can obviously still be bad. The effect itself, it doesn't mean you're going to roll great and always roll like fives and sixes on blades. It really helps you out. Again, I'd say this is another above average card. Seven or eight if it's built for that. Um, So yeah, I would say if you're built for blades, it's like a seven or eight card. You know, got a bunch of blades, claws, fangs on your team. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Is that a ship? Is that a soul? Is I it have no it idea. Like a, a sword ship thing? It is a floating. I don't know. A floating thing. It's some definitely like green, got some tree on it. Yeah, I just started watching uh, Doctor Stone or whatever that anime is called. Oh sure, dude. Um, it's reminiscent of that because it looks like a skyscraper covered in like trees. Because three thousand seven hundred years has passed, or something. Are you it liking shows... Doc? This is a huge site. Site. Are you liking it? I've had people recommend it to me. <sighs> the premise seems so cool, and then in That's actuality, it's like kind of becoming kind of lame like right off the bat oh. um they also do a lot of like the chibi stuff that i hate and like like shoujo kind of stuff uh where okay. it's just like big eyes and like mouth you know drops to like the floor and like wow oh, sure like, yeah you know, like crazy 
expressions. And yeah, everything where like the animation on. style overreact. What I consider like good animation style to like children's drawings for sure. comedic effect, and I Arn. so it does a lot of that. So far, it's just like. I'm trying to figure out what the entire plot is. Like, What's obviously, the, the main character's who's told the, you his the purpose, villain? but... Yeah. Oh, he does like that. Yeah, he's like, this is what I'm going to do, but, like... Yeah, he wants to go do science. We don't really have a whole lot of goals going on right now. Oh. Yeah. All right, the two All right. of swords. <laughs> two. The two of uh, swords is... Uh, oh, is that the same image? I don't know. the same one... <laughs> Yeah. Also, yeah, it's actually it's, it is, it literally says Ace of Swords. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly. So when a character uses energy explosion, they deal three damage instead of two. Unlike the sidestep one, this one is very good because three is, is the magic stupid magic good. number that gets through all reducers that aren't like special something or other reducers. So I give this one on certain teams. I give this one an eight out of ten. It's really good. It was really good when. Uh, Red Union Jack had it in uh, the Earth X set, and it's really good now that everyone can get it, including the guys that have penetrating psychic blast energy explosion. This this thing is dumb. Anyone on your team that can choose energy explosion, anyone on your team that has energy explosion, free damage energy explosion. Ugh, takes me back though when you used to wish uh, when energy explosion was based on your number of bolts for damage. Remember those days, Simeon? The good old days? That triple bolt energy explosion? Oh, oh yeah. So good. I remember. So good. I remember uh, you could, like, get even more than three damage for energy explosion because you could have yeah, multiple. You could like, target bolt. people and, like, have them, like, oh, that adjacent too. They'd be to hit by two targets. different. They'd be hit by two different splashes of energy explosion. Yeah. Yeah, was, I don't miss that. No. That was, that was real nasty. dumb. It was <laughs> also was really different. hard to, like, figure out and. Uh, Math on that kind of a headache. Me. Yeah, oh, love this card. And yeah, I think this is one of like as far as standard powers getting a boost goes. This is one of the big ones. Uh, energy explosion is a great way around a lot of things, um, like stealth, mastermind, just you know random stuff like that. One thing it always struggles with though is invul, impervious, uh, invincible, oh. and this at least is doing one damage through those. So. Now, even like characters that don't, you know, a three click long characters, right? Like energy explosion, sure, you kill a super or a flash. Now you kill a molecule man. Now you kill a teen lantern, et cetera, et cetera, so yeah. on and so forth. Right. Three of swords. We have a character uses pulse wave. They deal two damage instead of two. Again, same reason that the energy explosion one is good. Pulse wave being a locked one at all times, except for old special boy Nimrod Prime, is a nutty card. And the big two damage to everybody on that team as opposed to one that gets through everything. If you pull off a few full team pulse waves, I feel like every card I'm going to say this is awesome is Sakari and Iron Man. So just going forward, keep that in mind. Every card that has literally anything ever attack or speed power, it's good as Sakari and Iron Man. And now I'm never going to mention it again because this is nutty with Sakari and Iron Man. This is nutty with anybody with pulse wave that can choose it. I love this. I don't understand the artwork for it. Uh, Wolverine and uh, blue Dakin is it apocalypse and fire I it's like a it's yeah it's it's got to be so, like some sort of horseman thing but it's three i'd be a horseman yeah it's then it's like fire lord well it's not fire lord it's like <laughs> sun fire faced maybe. person sunfire yeah uh or and, the, I, I can't remember which of the Araco people which of the Araco people have war again, maybe i'm not getting the the pulse wave vibe from it it has the uh it has a very suicide-esque um joker type they're surrounded by knives it might oh, yeah be, it would be war it might be the war yeah yeah war is all fiery yeah you see what i mean like very joker suicide squad uh the knives all yeah. pointing at them um and swords i guess all pointing at them not big not i mean it's not crazy artwork it is unique i will say it looks different than all the other cards so far it stands out yeah that's cool man nutty card and i don't know i would say pulse wave does two damage instead of one nine ten that's awesome yeah amazing that can cripple teams yeah there's plenty of cheap pulse wave things out there and then there's plenty of characters with regular pulse wave like that Absolutely. aren't like, cheap but like they and yeah doing a two damage blast to like an entire team is definitely and this is also it. always good unless you can't make attacks for some reason that turn this is like always good. You're locked down. You're whatever. Yeah, pulse. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, 
Because, I mean, what was the pulse wave figure I was just talking about? Uh, Strange Supreme. Oh, yeah, Strange Supreme. If he gets also knocked off of his invincible stuff Supreme. and he yeah. starts pulse waving, that's pretty solid. Yeah, real good. All right. Next up is the Four of Swords. Uh, so this is the same kind of flavor as the previous two. Um, when a character uses Quake, they use they deal three damage instead of two, which, once again, very solid. Uh, this Real is good. like another one, you know, I use that flurry one where I get a third potential attack. Uh, if I miss one, I'd use this one, maybe the charge one. Um, and then I, if my Sky Tyrant is on the board and I drop any of these three cards, suddenly I'm like, I'm not mad because... You know, Sky Tyrant doing three damage with a Quake and Exploit, really good. And there's not yeah. any shortage of characters with, like, Charge, Quake, Exploit, or some sort of crazy kind of Quake stuff. Uh, so I think this one's actually really solid. I'd give, awesome. it like a, I'd give it a little bit less, like a 7 or 8. Probably closer I'd to 7. I'd say 7 or 8. Just because yeah. Quake isn't as optimal of a power. But, yeah, it's still... Still really solid, something that you can definitely build around easily. This is funny. Uh, I see. I like the artwork for this, for this one. It's very weird artwork. I think it's hilarious. For a character that can use super strength is given an action. After resolutions, they may generate a standard object for them to immediately hold. So this is sadly after they are given the action. But if that means you're already holding an object or you charge up, hit someone with the object, and it's gone, you instantly get another object. And it's kind of cute. The artwork works for it. So it's it's a white sword, and he's, like, picking up more swords off the ground, and he's, like, carrying them with him. He's on the beach. He's got some friends on the beach with him. I don't know. It's kind of funny artwork. It looks very uh, filler episode uh, anime-type beach episode uh, artwork with a little white sword here. I like it. It's nothing crazy. I think if the objects did two instead of one, it would be... I'd give it a higher score. I'd probably give this dude, like, a six or seven... It's because keeping that extra one damage is really nice. You, know, you only get it for a turn, but it's like, all right, you burn the object, and I was like, oh, I got it again. It's not nutty. Eh, yeah. Maybe more five, six, since it is only one turn. Heavy, if, uh, if heavy objects Arocco, dealt two, I'd say this is a seven. Morocco summer vacation vibes. Yeah. <laughs> got the nice cloud the, beaches. The special I'm just going movie. on the beach, going to pick up uh, my swords. It's not the normal episode one. It's the, the special movie that takes part in between the the seasons yeah between seasons yeah oh it's time for summer vacation what are we gonna find on the beach and white swords just like i got a bunch of swords he's just picking them up it's like oh i got seashells i got seaweed i got swords i found all these swords look at all these swords swords okay that's that's cool white swords thank you with all these swords yeah uh super Uh, strength it needs a change like this just to the power in general yeah Um, i would agree so it's rough because it's probably one of the worst powers right now, where it just There's does just not, not do almost any people with super strength. You know, for me, I guess it's like U.S. Yeah. Agent, She Hulk, and full of others right now. There's just not a lot of super strength, man. Yeah, there, that's the other thing. Not a lot of super strength. So it's sadly one of the cards that'll be more underused, simply for the fact that there's almost no printed super strength on it, anyone. There's not a lot of objects that give it out either. Um, Six of Swords, when a character uses Incapacitate, after resolutions, they may deal their printed damage value divided between all hit targets that were given an action token. So this is the same as the Mind Control one. Obviously, this one isn't as great. Technically, it does the same thing, but like I hate using Incap usually. Um, I will say using Incap where I'm dealing printed damage value is way cooler it's just I don't normally build teams with like heavy amounts of in cap. See, I do build I'm heavy on the reverse mind control teams. I build I build heavy in cap teams. I've always liked incapacitate as a power. Um, the title Captain America principled. There's a lot of stuff to do with in cap. And Mailkith, one of the worst mission point figures in the world, maybe becomes a little bit better with this card oh, for yeah, a yeah. turn. So if you try to build a mission point deck around Mailkith, I could see you adding this. It, since you can only add so many yeah, major you're, arcana. You're at least dealing you know? damage still. Yeah, now you get to deal damage with the in app. I think on a Wonder Woman Justice League type team with the lasso, it's solid. Or if you even That's just have true. lasso equipment. I was going to so say, yeah, I didn't think about that. But the, the lasso equipment, you know? doing in cap for free and then also dealing your damage to them. Yeah. That is well, basically I like that. a free, you know, 
action token plus attack kind of thing. Yeah. So I think it's got really good uses if you build for it. Because it's after resolutions you're dealing. It's not being dealt from the attack that gets through stop click. So, you know, if they've got toughness with a stop click and you deal them like four because that's your primary damage value, it's going to just bypass that stop click, which is really cool. Just like Exodus, just like, you know, that mind control one, um, they won't be able to super sense or shape change out of that printed damage value being dealt. It's it also doesn't trigger mystics, so there's true. There's a bunch of stuff that like this one's black cool. hard killer tarot card. What can we honestly, say, ladies and gents? Yeah, I was gonna say honestly, Mess this one up. and the uh, mind, mind control, control one. one. Both, yeah, those are two because that one was the pentacles. This one's swords, so like you could play both on the same uh, five card. Maybe deck. you got someone who's a consistent black heart lover player in your area. You know, yeah, it's gonna help you deal She's with them a bit. Really, one turn them. Yeah, it'd be I mean, hilarious. You definitely could one turn him with like Exodus normally, but right with uh, with those two options, you can yeah. do some crazy stuff. Uh, so then we've got the Seven of Swords. A little long shot. Let's count his fingers: one, two, three, four, five. Too many fingers, long shot. He's only supposed to have four. Where's that extra finger coming from? I want to answer that question. Verify it. I don't know where he's getting an extra finger. Three, four, five. Here's yeah. alternate universe uh, mock shot with fingers. He's at like uh, he's at the circus, man. Yeah. Come on, leave him alone. He's, he's having a good time with the circus. holding the swords like that, but yeah, that's a terrible way to do it. Maybe this is actually long shot didn't always have <laughs> three flashback. or four fingers. This is the origin of how he got four fingers right here, where he he's traded, about. He's yeah, like he traded a pinky for luck. He's yep. like, oh man, he was just like a big goof him up with no luck and then sliced off his own pinky using like Excalibur and yeah. was like, man, if only I had some luck. And then Excalibur and, uh, was like, your wish is granted, woo, and then disappeared. Ooh, and now it's like, that's oh, what Excalibur nice. says. Yeah, exactly. It's Excalibur, your wish is granted, California, or something like that. I think, I think that's what Excalibur sounds like. It's, I mean, it's close. Yeah, of course. Soul Eater is what we're oh. referencing. Um, oh. Oh. All right, I'm done. I'm done. All right, so I mean, tell us what Seven of Swords does. What's Longshot doing here? So this is when a character can use Penetrating Psychic Blast. Uh, character that can use Penetrating Psychic Blast makes a range attack. After resolutions, deal one pen damage to each opposing character adjacent to a hit target. Ooh, that's real uh, good. Very good. Um, there's like a Mandarin ring that you used to pay five points to do something similar to this. Yeah. It's pretty solid. So you're dealing full pen damage to one person, and then anyone they're adjacent to is also taking one pen damage after resolutions. Uh, I like that a lot. Not a lot of like retaliators in modern, but this this is a good way to get rid of them. I mean, tarot cards are also legal for silver. Get so. rid of uh, get rid of some bystanders. Yeah. Kill some of their supporting crew. Yeah, get them off of her You got, the, you know, got that, stuff like that. that pesky uh, Blackheart. And you uh, you shoot his Hellfire Guard, deal pen damage to his Hellfire Guard, deal Blackheart one pen damage as well. Or oh, very like, true. You know, vice versa. Hit Blackheart, Blackheart can't mastermind that pen damage. Ooh, see what I'm saying? Yeah, he can't, pe- he can't mastermind Aww. the one pen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you got multiple characters on your turn that can use Penetrating Psychic like Blast, really good. For nickel and diming down people, so I like this card a lot. Yeah. I don't know, and if like they're an grouped eight? up, like you know, being taxied like, around, and you oh, get for like, sure. one shot off. That's a lot of damage going around, almost as good as uh, energy explosion. All right, eight of swords here. Yeah. When a character uses smoke cloud, the markers don't need to be generated adjacent to each other. This is great for just putting, like, in my opinion, smoke cloud under either characters right instead of covering an area you can put them down each specific friendly character or opposing character i think that's great i love it the picture simeon what what is the eight of swords picture here uh it's it's good old genie genie no (laughs) oh gosh (laughs) it's wolverine pining over uh the picture of gene and scott as he lays in bed uh the good old meme uh, image with, the, of, with an updated uh, modern costume, which is yeah, so funny. But it's yeah. it's from like the the X Men animated it's, series. It's the, yeah, it's you've definitely so seen good. it before. Um, yeah, the fact that they found a way to fit this in doesn't even really make sense. There are eight. No, yeah, there, there's eight. eight yeah, there's swords eight swords in the background. In there's or eight swords. sword looking things. Um, 
Yeah. But like the, the fact they managed to work this into the artwork is pretty fun. Uh, I like that a lot. It's one of my favorite ones that they've done. So, yeah. The smoke cloud markers not needing to be generated adjacent to each other. Um, it's not like crazy good, but like on in certain no. situations, it is kind of crazy good. Because like, I don't know. Just, man I don't, being able to it, just like, like pepper the like area instead of solid line, you know? Is it, is it ever crazy good? I mean, crazy good? I don't know. Solid. I, mean, I think Solid, so. maybe. It's like, then you've also but got like I mean, that red root guy, right? He does stuff with Smoke Cloud. I mean, yeah, he does. So You're like, not wrong. I mean, there's situationally Smoke Cloud not having to be I'm adjacent. I'm still giving this card cool. like a four or five, though. Oh, yeah. It's not. Just because yeah. it's, it's hard to build with. It's almost yeah. impossible to build with, honestly. You know, um, I don't know if this like makes it into many decks, though. Am I going to put a Smoke Cloud card? my deck no. of all things you know what i mean yeah i'm not because smoke cloud on itself is just there's a few characters that can like poison uh, through smoke cloud but on its, in, like, in that case that would be really good actually you know yeah if i can just like shoot one smoke maybe cloud if you are building to, like, around a opposing character. Smoke cloud character or something yeah yeah so i'm thinking like nightshade who has like that special smoke cloud uh this big silver. okay um if i can see what is it like five range i think she has if I can see three different characters, I could smoke cloud in each one of their squares, regardless of if they're adjacent to each other, okay. and then poison all three. But like, is that going to be worth it to have that card and potentially be in a situation where I can do that? It's almost never happening. Like, almost never. So yeah, I don't even know if I give it a five. I'd probably give it like a four, because it's so hard to pull off. Uh, next up, we got good old Elizabeth Braddock being stabbed by count them four, six, eight, nine swords. Yeah. She didn't um, mess up. Dog. Psionic blades. They look to be, uh, so this is when the nine of swords, when a character that can use precision strike makes an attack, that attack can't be evaded. No super senses and damage taken from the attack can't be reduced below two instead of one. Very good. Precision. Strike really good. Is passed out like candy. Um, there's plenty of people and bystanders and cheap figures that have precision strike. So the fact that it can't be evaded at all, not even on a six, not even like with boosted super senses, just can't be evaded. So if you hit the attack roll and that's their defense, that's their, you know, protection, it just doesn't work. And then the fact that it can't be reduced below two instead of one, that means you're dealing a lot more damage than you normally would. Like those little, um, what, like death by a thousand cut kind of like teams yeah you're actually getting through some dials which is pretty cool artwork on this one is awesome it's one of like the my favorite ones it's you get fits it's crazy it's cool but yeah and it yeah. also as far as like the power goes yeah the precision strike not being evaded she definitely didn't evade all those blades that are definitely not her. no she's all a shish kebab rock like. shape. yeah shishimi braddock that's what her new name is. Because, oh, Savage. Uh, That's messed up, dude. She's been sushi-fied. Um, next up is the Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords? When a character uses poison, they deal damage even if they have been moved or placed during their turn. This is nutty. That's, like, the one biggest thing that, like, you know, poison, like, that hurts poison. And instead, it's like, nah, I can move all over the place. Poison you, bro. Nothing's safe. And that's... I like it because it's a very intimidating card, too. It's like Apocalypse, Wolverine, and then uh, War again. No, it's Magic. Magic and then uh, Elizabeth Braddock. Looking all menacingly at you. Like, yeah, I'm going to poison you. I, I would love playing this like an old-school Red Lantern team. It would be really fun. There's obviously a ton of good poison options to mess around with this. But, uh, yeah, I think having a team that just has a bunch of poison on it. What I really like with this is... Go. Uh... There's the Sunfire from the Hellfire Gala, who oh, yeah. gives all adjacent friendly X-Men um, poison. So when a character uses poison, they deal damage even if they've been moved or placed during their turn. So like you could quite literally, with a team of X-Men, phase up, like carry up Sunfire and anyone else that has the X-Men keyword, even though they've been placed or moved... You Ooh, suddenly yeah. have like five characters. Like they don't even have to have printed poison. You're just giving them all poison because they're adjacent to Sunfire. 
and oh, yeah, that's so good. pretty nuts. Be so nasty. Imagine five poison damage. Boop 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 boop. I mean, as long as you're it, yeah. <laughs> like the I one, mean, yeah, the one thing that could go wrong is like tough. they have protected outwit and toughness. So you have to watch out for that old toughness. I like this card though. Like oh yeah, it's a good. straight upgrade to poison. I don't know. Like, and there's still it's characters crazy, that do pen poison. Not super reliable to it, so it's like you know a seven or eight in my opinion. I'd say yeah. an above average card for sure. Yeah, I don't gnarly build card. with poison like all the time, but it's one of those powers that surprisingly gets around a lot of stuff. Like you'd be oh, yeah. surprised how you know like your opponent makes like a really hard to hit kind of team, and you just base them and start poisoning them away. Um, like I killed a maggot and a lockjaw with poison and stuff. So oh, yeah. it's definitely possible. It's just I don't know. They don't make a ton That's of great poison figures, but uh, not a ton come yeah. to mind, right? No. What was the bice? Oh, I guess it is a maggot bystander. The like eeny or meeny. Yeah. So you can I mean, like, that thing is technically be generate anyways. it and move it, even though yeah, no if you want like to. Oh. All right, the Knight of Swords. I clicked on the wrong one. Knight of Swords. Whoop. There we go. Uh, oh, she got better. That's fine. Uh, no, she's feeling fine now. <laughs> when a character uses telekinesis, after resolutions, remove an action token from them. Solid. It's not solid. Like, it's not something I really want to pull late game, but if I pull it turn one, turn two, it's really good. Um, character uses TK after actions or after resolutions, they remove an action token. Pretty solid. Like it's not game breaking it's not gonna like win me games but it does free up my tk piece to i don't know depending on the build like barrier next turn or tk another person or like who knows just move and carry whatever um yeah and it's got elizabeth braddock she's only got one sword right now she's holding it not being stabbed with it and she's riding a pale horse so mm. cool artwork it's got like Pretty a certain, mandala certain. like sun. I don't know what they call that. The weird like sun rise I don't thing. Neat. Yeah, with the stripes. Yeah, it looks yeah. cool. But yeah, she's got that behind her. It's a fine card. I'm going to say because its utility is like for me, I think in the first couple turns, I don't think it's really doing a whole lot. My TK pieces tend to be unactioned until I need them. Uh, I don't yeah. tend to, like, double action them and, like, be, like, stuck. Like, oh, I really wish I'd had my TK right now. Um, I will say, in, I mean, if you're using Venom Magneto a ton, if it's, like, a free TK and you have two tokens... I was going to say, yeah. We're good, this... right? And then you free remove a token and then can now power action, cost a TK. Yeah, where this know, really nice. kicks off is if you do have somebody who can free TK, like, Onslaught, Venom Magneto... Um, I think there's there's only like a handful of characters that can do free TKs, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's using, not a bunch. Just using the power gets you to remove an action token. It's pretty good. It's like better. I mean, honestly, it's just uh, much much better willpower. It's like free willpower that just automatically succeeds. Except we have the Queen of Swords. When a character attacks, the roll is, oh, sorry, rolls of ten and eleven are critical hits. This is again. Technically, can always be in use, but it's a big if. Big, very iffy. Extra damage. I think this one is evaded. similar to the uh, other one that we talked about. This one really helps your opponent yeah. just as much as you, so it's... Oh, very true, yeah. Be wary of it. The times I wouldn't be running this is um, if I'm not running a ton of prob on my team or if my team is like a high defense team. Because if I'm running a team and I'm like, oh, like I've got a 21 defense and you've got an 8 attack... And they roll a 10, and like that's an 18 attack, but all of a sudden it's a critical hit. Well, I just played myself kind of thing, you know. Um, it's cool. It does the same, essentially the same effect as one of those Thor equipments. I don't remember if it was Jarnia Born or what it was, but there's mm, yeah, a Thor I think equipment. So. I think that sounds right. Yeah. yeah it, like, increase also, the crit rolls. The art is dope. Storm's looking like kind of a boss. Yeah. Like Queen of, queen of the Castle over here. Got way Not more hair chair. than I remember, but yeah, that's a lot of hair. Very cloud. I like the way it looks like clouds and oh, stuff. It's that's true. Dope. She has like a lightning bolt uh, piece of whatever in her hair. It's really cool. Really dope artwork. So I appreciate that. Again, though, it can hurt you just as bad as it hurts your opponent. So be wary. I think this is one of like the more fun ones for casual, though, 
because it just like for a turn it just between this one and like the all misses or crit misses Ooh, it would be a for a turn one. it just you know potentially increases damage yeah. it doesn't necessarily help one person more than the other it's just interesting like little uh thing to throw in a little wrench in the works kind of thing awesome. all right the king of swords who is he we don't know uh when this character hits with an attack roll of doubles after resolutions remove an action token from him unlike the critical hit one this one i think is like the first like two i'm gonna say Okay. I never want to pull this card. Like I don't ever want this card to be in play. It's not fun. It's it's so unlikely. It's not like uh, I shouldn't say it's so There's unlikely. It's pretty so unlikely to roll doubles. And then the so uh, many mechanics in Hero Click Simeon though. Like there was a time for a long time. There was a million different mechanics or special powers for characters that would only pop off if you rolled doubles in an attack. Yeah. Like it'd be the coolest stuff too, but it's like, dude, rolling doubles is not is, that uh, easy to do. The Prime Angela um, from the oh, Mighty sure. Thor, who when she rolls a crit hit, it's like halfway down her dial, so it's not even top dial. Um, yeah, when she hit, like rolls a crit hit on that click, uh, the opposing character is just KO'd. It doesn't like deal damage extra or anything. It just literally says KO them. So. It's like crit hit, like, oh, I've got like five stop clicks. Doesn't care. You're just KO'd. You could be 12 million points. It doesn't matter. Her, like, her special power literally just says KO them. Um, this is not that. This is bad. No. Uh, there it's there are bad. a few characters that can, obviously, there's die swap. There are a few characters that can replace, like, long shot, I think, can add like a five to his. He can replace, like, a thing with a five. And so he can potentially. Uh, have like easier doubles there's a lot of people that can do easier doubles but then if you're building around it at best you get to remove an action token from them after resolutions so it's not like doing extra damage or anything crazy it's just like removing an action token which is in most circumstances just kind of okay like it's it's yeah, good it's, it's not bad it's just kind of okay and I don't want to have to build around nah. like the, the aspect of rolling doubles <laughs> This so might like, be the first card that's like a three or a yeah, two. I'm, I'm gonna real say meh. two on this one. I just I'm yeah. not a fan. I think it's I think it's real lame. Honestly, I don't know why. I just for whatever reason I feel like it's super lame. All right. That's yeah. Good way to end the swords. That's swords. Yeah, clearly <laughs> great way to end the swords. Ace of Cups. When a character uses super senses, increase the result of the roll by plus one. Apocalypse is raising the glass to whatever apocalyptic things i suppose in the art which looks dope i actually really like the art for this it looks great tell just by the forearm like that's apocalypse raising up the cup looks cool the plus one to increase by super senses rolls again make sure note affects you and your opponent but if you have a super senses heavy team a wonder woman team Spider man team whatever this card just auto needs to on your absolutely any any super senses type team a uh Super scroll team, all that stuff. This is just a great card. You know, if you build for super senses, again, remember it hurts it helps your opponent just as well as it helps you. And if they're not built for it, then that's like no problem. So if you have the majority rules super senses, I had to play against a spider hole who succeeds on like four through six already, or if you play like an Emma Frost who succeeds on a four through six, now that's a three through six senses, which is gnarly. I really like it. I think it's amazing. Anyone with Wonder Woman equipment. That, Order of all, that one specific one is like the bracelets. That. Bracelets, yeah. Yeah, bracelets. Oh. Um, anyone with Wonder Woman team ability or that can copy it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So giving a 50-50 or greater Super Senses, pretty darn good. To me, you build a Super Senses team, this is I like, feel like super senses and an 8 or 9. Common. It's really it's common right now. Fairly common power, like Precision Strike mm -hmm. and Energy... Oh, Energy explosion to a lesser degree, but I feel like you know there's a Flash ton of super, super senses, senses. Um, especially since like, they didn't even give like the symbiotes shape change like they should yeah, have. They gave them a lot super of those senses. guys got super, got super senses. You know, so yeah, I would say uh, this is like an eight or nine for me. Build it for super senses. This is awesome, amazing card. Yeah, I agree. All right, the two of cups. So this is when a character uses toughness, reduce damage by two instead of one. Um, I think it just it should just say like 
a character characters that have toughness reduce damage by two instead of one because you don't really choose to use toughness when a character uses toughness technically it activates when damage would be dealt i guess it's just kind of worded weird for my brain but yeah this is like toughness becomes invuln so it's not bad um it's not great i don't know how you really build with a reducer in mind kind of deck but if you do build a team and you see there's a lot of toughness sitting around i wouldn't mind throwing this card on because yeah being able to reduce by two instead of one a normal energy explosion suddenly doesn't get through it normal quake doesn't get through it um there's a lot of stuff like it's kind of good it's kind of sneaky good i'll say and there's even you know for whatever it's worth there's like that hulk that passes out toughness there's a i think there's another character like a colossus or someone armor i think we saw like an armor that uh, passes out toughness um so there's like a couple options when it comes to being able to use toughness and getting this boost. I'll give it like a 7 because turning one of like the worst kind of defense powers into one of a like a mediocre one, it's like bumping it up a whole level. It's re- like reducing enough damage to get through quake uh poison uh energy explosion that kind of stuff. It's pretty good. Still not yeah. going to reduce pen damage, but still pretty decent. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Three, Three of cups. Cups. The character uses defend, replace value, is instead their printed defense value plus one. Amazing on defend heavy teams. Got defend anywhere on your team. If you're building with like Watcher or the Rare Green Lantern, Captain Carter, whatever, you know, have Captain Carter shield. This gives you an extra plus one. So I love this card. Love it for defend heavy team. When it's on with a 19 defend Captain Carter shield, now it's a 21 defend with a modifier. You know, so it's 19, but it's you know 21. It's dope. I like it a lot. I don't think it's a insanely nutty thing, but on a defensive shell team, on the correct team, this can be like a card that's like a 10 out of 10. I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 on the right defensive shell team. I think it's fun. I like defend as a power. So I will say awesome. Because it's the replace value is instead their printed defense value. Oh, it's true, the replace one. value. So now... Uh, oof, so if I'm doing insane. like, yeah, 20 defense watcher, yeah, this, this is the replace value is 21. 21, And yeah. then you no, could potentially get 10. to 24. Yep, this card's just a 10. It's it pretty good. Like, I... Artwork needs uh needs work. It's yeah. Track needs I don't know artwork. The... These are cuckoos, right? They're Stepford cuckoos. I think so. In, in rain ponchos. They're X-Men rain ponchos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, raising the glass, and these cups should all be. Uh, I are they not just Emma Frost's? They're not like clones. They're they're oh. children, or at least they oh. were children at one Weird. point. Okay, I'm not gonna get into it, I, but I believe she's like a uh, like a gremlin, and somebody fed her after midnight, and it's then she got not wet, true, and she right? started like not, spitting out clones. This isn't canon. Yeah, this can't be. I'm this can't sure. be right. Pretty sure that's so wrong. Happened. That's how the step for uh, this, this card's like a ten for me. Then I I didn't realize. Yeah, no, this card's dope. Love it. Yeah, being able to get twenty four and hero clicks finally. Ooh, uh, the we got a different cups. cups. Yeah, this artwork has different These are cups. Wine oh. cups. Um, and Mystique is known to wine. Uh, oh, and so, she's yeah. like, no, thank you. Like, I'll nah. say the artwork on this one isn't the greatest, but it's He's so saying no to peer pressure. He isn't, she's gonna drive yeah. later, and this she's does being responsible. Have like the mad, like, uh, what was that? Dare to resist. It's got like some dare Pretty vibes. Much so. Like if I was looking through a one handing you a, yeah. a wine glass, and it's like, no, thank you, I'm Put good. Put up your hand and later. say, no, I will not. Yeah, thank you, Mystique. Uh, when a character uses combat reflexes, modify their defense plus three instead of plus two. Uh, we have a shield that does this. Um, I'll say for one turn, I don't want to rate this real low because this feels like yeah. a sidestep kind of thing where like a plus one to an already plus two isn't that great. Um, depending on the build though, if I'm already like planning on having a bunch of combat reflexes, close combat kind of stuff, or if I'm using like that, um, what is it? Uh, old man Logan that passes out combat reflexes, you know, like something that does something like that people that pick those powers or have those powers uh there's that apocalypse that has the esd and combat reflexes maybe i throw this in the mix i'll say it's like a five or six 
it's not the best card to pull, but you know, having a plus one to defense for a turn isn't bad at like any point in the game. So why not? It's just most of the time I'm not building with a ton of combat reflexes. I prefer rollouts instead of combat yeah. reflexes, but right. uh, I've uh, knocked these cups over. We get disappointed white Magneto costume looking at like some of the cups being knocked over. Yeah, he's like this was definitely the father. Yeah, he's like, man, I don't know. Exactly. now I gotta clean this up. Over. Now it's my problem. Great. This is the same thing as the last one, both ESD. So when a character uses ESD, modify the defense plus three instead of plus two. Eh, it's it's again. I'm gonna say the same thing as Simeon. It's meh. It's whatever. Three. You know, it's like meh. It's. I think ESD is a little bit better. It is. I mean, it is, but still, it's again. But yeah, it's still. Eh. It's still like, what is it? What is this doing? Because if you want a defense heavy team, there's better ways to go yeah. about it than to have like some tarot cards pop, possibly pop up. All right, we got uh, Zach Galifianakis with a mullet holding a brain in this image. Um, when a character this is a Tristan, this is like actually Tristan. <laughs> when a character using barrier uses barrier, the markers don't need to be generated adjacent to each other. So similar to the um, smoke cloud one, but like for the same reasons that I thought smoke cloud one was okay, I think this one's even better because you know there still exists in modern a fifteen point like Marvella that can barrier. Uh, I think being able to generate them not adjacent to each other matters more depending on what map you're on. So if I can block off like one whole path with two and then another whole path with another two and I don't have to like, you know, focus one way or the other, I think it's pretty solid. Do I think it's like enough to like put in my deck and hope that I pull it turn one or turn two or like, you know, when I need it? That's where it's like just kind of rough because this is really, in my opinion, only yeah, a solid I, thing yeah, early man. on. I like my barrier next to each other. What can I say? I'm old fashioned. True, and like, I mean sometimes, not... yeah, you don't need them to be split up. Like, there's a, yeah. been a few times where I'm like, man, I really wish I could get one all the way over there. Um, there's a few characters that can use barrier, and it's like you have to break away from it as if you were adjacent to them or something. I don't think this is worth building around. I'm gonna give it a four. Just because barriers have better power, and so anything I that will makes it better. Concur with that. Yeah, it's it's rough, but it's it's something. Um, the seven of cups. Ooh, we have seven Nimrod cups. Prime. Is that Prime Nimrod the Greater? Uh, Nimrod know, the dude. Normaler. He's got little uh, little purple wings though. He's floating in a cloud with some cups. It's an interesting looking card. It looks cool. When a character uses Mastermind, they may choose a friendly character in six squares instead of adjacent. I mean, straight upgrade to Mastermind. If you got a Mastermind team, this helps your your poor positioning. Little little baby made terrible positioning mistakes, and thankfully yeah. you have this card to help you make up for it. We talked about that. Or also, uh, you have good positioning, it can also help you out apocalypse. a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, he already masterminds that... in six squares during one uh, his special defense power, right? right. But yeah. now, all the time... And this is in play. He's got that, which is really good. The like so. lower dial hundred point one can do this. Oh now. yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. I think like yeah, the first two clicks or no, I don't remember the two hundred fifty point line and three hundred point line. I don't know. There's a few characters. Obviously, there's some good characters that can use Mastermind. Uh, Blackheart could really benefit from this one. Uh, being able to Mastermind to oh, those sure. Hellfire guards that aren't adjacent would be really good. And it's a character within six squares, not line of fire. So they can be around walls, under rocks, uh, up like five elevations yeah. away. You know, so that's wherever. pretty cute and solid. Yeah. I, I dig it. I think it's awesome. I think, I'm going to say it's like a seven or eight card. It doesn't have like an overpowered effect necessarily. It's really, really good. Be, be great strong. for um, Red Sun Lex if like somebody tried to like oh, blast them back yes. or something, knock him back away from like his people like you know yeah suddenly doesn't matter i'm gonna mind control or mastermind to that uh to that guy over there six squares away all right the eight of cups Ooh, we've got annihilation oh slash gosh. genesis this is a pop be some wife. of the best art i have yeah. seen i like that split art is amazing. yeah the annihilation mask and then the uh, uh it's like uh I'm gonna say like Mesoamerican, like inspired kind of like aesthetic, where it's very like Aztec kind of look, 
but it's still really cool. It's, I, it's still really cool, as if it like that would make it less cool. Um, also, if you look closely, there's like a wolf head on the one side, and then like a wolf skull on the other side. Like, ooh, life and death. Ooh, interesting. One is life, one is not. Eight of Cups is, when a character uses willpower, increase the result of the roll by plus one. Guess what giants fail on now, Calder? Colossals and uh, giants. It's a one, baby. Fail only a power rolls on only a one. When it's this the is one, a ladies and gents. Yikes. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Yikes. Uh, this card is probably a nine. Willpower got such a huge boost. So. It's so good. Um, being unactioned is awesome. This makes, you know, power cosmic a 50 50. But like I said, if you're running a giant or a colossal, oh, man. It's almost I'd say, uh, never going to not Soldier kick Serum. off. And yeah, this on a, a Party Thor team. Uh, uh, Party Thor, so you know, Sharon Carter, or Power Broker, Carter. I guess, not Sharon Carter. But yeah, yeah, like, there's so many characters that this just does a really, like, really boosted kind of effect. Will so it many pop good off when you need it? I don't know. Willpower. There's no. a good chance that, like, this won't get drawn when you really need it. Like, you'll clear, and then the next turn you'll draw it, and you'll next be like, great. Oh, no. Great. I already have. Awful. You know. I mean, um, that's the whole thing of all these tarot cards. Really quickly, there are two wolves inside of you. One is stupid. The other is stu- or stupid. That's one of my favorite stupid. memes of all time. I love yeah. that. All right. There's two churros but inside seriously, of me. One is beef. Like, one is beef. They're both beef. beef. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's eight of cups. It's a good one. It's one of the, like, it's great art, and then the effect is... Oh, that is, seriously, some of the coolest I art. I like that. The effect might be universally bad, because if your opponent oh, has true. more colossals or more, like, willpower boosts than you do, you know, oopsie-doops kind of thing. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that's that's why you really want to have tarot on your side, or on your, uh, your main force, so you can... You can be like, oh, just put that card right to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, you didn't it. see that. Let's see... Nine of cups. Good old mm, Mad old Jim. Mad, Mad Jim. Look at them. All those cups looking like a little circus man. Invincible has protected outwit. So good. Huh. The cute little effect, and yet it's so insanely dumb. Yeah. I like it. I the like one it a lot. Thing that like everyone with Invincible wishes they had. this makes like the uncommon magneto from the set. Oh so good. 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 For a hundred points, all of a sudden he's got like six clicks or five clicks of Invincible that are protected out wit if this card's in play. Hey, I'm a little curious how this works if Invincible is part of a special power with other powers and you outwit the special power, you know what I mean? That is that special power doesn't have protected out wit, but Invincible does. But if I outwit the special power, do I still get Invincible? I would say maybe, maybe I don't. Maybe it's been I answered. I would say that you could outwit the, like, the special power and it just gets rid of Invincible as well. Um, because this is only protecting Invincible specifically. So if you get rid of like, you know, mud in your eyes, and that has Invincible as a named power in it, like they don't check for that. So it's not like it's not partially protecting part of like the special power. It's it's protecting the power itself. I don't know. That is an interesting one. But I would imagine for special powers where Invincible is included, it would just get rid of it both. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. But, uh, I don't know, but obviously this is a stupid, dumb, stupid, good card. I'm thinking like you know, if you had invincible and stuff on your team, like almost a nine, ten. Yeah. So good. I mean, technically, if they don't have outwit, then it's like no problem. I guess doesn't even do anything. But still, like really, really good. Yeah, it's a power that I I hate to see when I'm like trying to deal pen damage. Um, it's a power that I love having when my opponent's doing a bunch of mystical stuff. All right. Next up, we have the Ten of Cups. So we have. Uh, I think, oh, that's like, pretty the cute. Horsemen. That's, that's kind of cute, though. They're little tiny yeah. horsemen. The though. Rainbow Aww. Bridge horsemen. They're looking they're, at a they're rainbow. Travel to Aww. Asgard. Um, yeah. <laughs> when a character uses impervious, they increase the result. You increase the result of the roll by plus one. Um, oh, good. Really good. Yeah, a 50 50 oh, impervious like is solid. And then there's people that already have like a 50 50 impervious or an improved impervious. So yeah, you could potentially increase the better. result by they another one. It just gets better. Yeah. We're going to get to the point in the game where rollouts, like, you can max rollouts to like only fail on a one kind of thing. Uh, and this, I mean, this is one step closer for impervious, at least. Obviously, pen damage is still your nightmare for this but like 
I can think, you might, know, yeah. Emperor Gladiator might appreciate this since he reduces pen damage and has impervious and has his confidence token. This might be something that he likes to see pop up so he can potentially roll for impervious instead of using like mastermind or whatever. Uh, the artwork on this is funky, but it's decent. It's just like I expected more texture in the background. Instead, it's like these it's like the Care Bears got transformed into weird wine glasses. <laughs> And they're just like yeah, sitting on a rainbow. Yeah, they're just they're weird. It's odd, it's, uh, but you know, there's ten of them. Looks cool so, though. Yeah. yeah. All right. right. The Knight of Cups. Knight of Cups. The Long Knight of Cups. Ooh, this is kind of neat. I like that Pegasus. Uh, whoever is that, that chick is, probably maybe. I, would chick. it be Valkyrie and? And it looks X-Men? like Sif. I, I mean, know. it's not an X, right? It shouldn't be them. It should be an X person, but. It only has the one cup, the knight cup, I guess. When a character uses invulnerability, reduce damage taken by three. Oh, Lord. Instead of two. Thanos' favorite friggin' card here. Yeah. Good gracious. Yikes. A Ugh. great card for him. I mean, honestly, a great card for anyone with invuln. I mean, anyone like that with invuln. This one was like a good boost. An unoutwittable, unpenetrating invuln. Yeah. Really likes this card, Sim. Um, well, this he's, is he's dumb. not unoutwittable. He's just protected outwit. Like, okay, I, uh, fair enough. But I you know what I mean. Him. You, you. I I'm can, not a hundred percent sure on that. I can outwit a Thanos player any day of the week. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe not Thursday. <laughs> if we found that out, but uh, wait, that was Saturday. Never. Well, oh, whatever. Doesn't matter. Anyways, <laughs> I'll have to double check my calendar, man. Calendar, man. Man. My calendar man. Calendar. No, yeah, this, Anyways, this is good. It's, it it's not. It's good. Broken. It's not uh, amazing. No, I would almost never play solid. this though, just for the off chance that I do go against uh, the Thanos. Uh oh, that's fair. Actually, you know, and even in, like the you... mirror match, the chance Ugh. of this getting pulled at an inopportune Ugh. time. Oh, be bad. Yeah. You know, it's like I yeah, I might. You know, I might draw this card when my opponent has two action tokens. I still and think I'm if you're a unactioned. Thanos player, you still play this card no matter what on a Thanos team. Probably. But competitively, if you're not playing Thanos and you just have a bunch of invulnerability, it's a little risque to play this card. I think it's because it does down, pop they're all up very scared. Thanos. So, like, that's, yeah. that's why they oh, would play this. Is. Little baby babies. <laughs> you know, little Thanos players, little baby. No, please don't kill my Thanos. No. Won't be offended, Emily. I didn't mean that. I love you, Emily. Yeah. Anyway, just mad because they don't get to generate Eternals after he dies. I'm like, mm, yeah, you waste fifteen yeah. minutes of your time putting these Eternals down. Um, mm, there's so many squares they could go in. Mm. Yeah. High mm. brain maneuver coming soon. Queen of Cups. Ah, uh, you got a somebody. I don't know who that is. <laughs> is that not also just Elizabeth Braddock? But she it just could be out and dressed up like stuff? the. Uh, the Queen of Hearts from like Alice in Wonderland or something. Oh, it is a very Queen of Hearts look. Yeah, yeah. big big head, big hair. Um, Queen of Cups characters take a max of two damage from attacks. I love this. Gives the uh, multiple man trait uh, to everyone. This is um, Peace Machine's wife right here. Like, yeah, it's pretty great. Better than Peace Machine. So instead yeah, of capping it at three, so yeah, this is anyone any team that doesn't run a ton of reducers. Um, like the spooktacular team. If you miss oh, your yeah. change, miss your rollout, Great. they manage to hit your high defense. Boom, they do a max of two damage in one turn. This is good. Uh, there's Some a lot of teams is. that can use this. Like, you know, Animal doesn't like taking a ton of damage in one turn. Uh, think how long those, like, lockjaw dials are when they only take two damage from attacks. Oh, my gosh. This Yikes. doesn't save, this does not save, like, flashes, I guess. Um, oh, very sad. But yeah, there's very sad, Barry Allen. Decent amount of like characters that uh, don't have like reducers, and this essentially gives them like some sort of kind of reduction, reduction, <laughs> reduction. Um, but yeah, I'll give this one an eight. I think it's really good. My biggest gripe with this one is throughout this whole turn, you're also only going to be able to do max of two damage to your opponent like per yeah. attack so it's unless really, you have really this and you have like guard. a bunch of those precision though. strike people and you're planning on doing like death by a thousand cuts thing anyhow if you're not planning on doing that this is going to hurt you just as bad as it hurts them in that turn the same thing we've said about a lot of these it affects you too 
affects them too. Like, ugh. All right, King, the King of Cups, King of Coops. Oh so, man, that's not Toby Keith. I, I was really, I was really hoping for a Toby Keith Red Solo Cup. We know he's Red the King of Cups. Red Solo cup. 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 I make money I from you. you up. Oh. That's well, this is also correct. <laughs> uh, when a character takes damage from an attack after a deletion. Uh, no, they probably struck a deal, because I guarantee because of that, Sar, they sold way more, specifically oh, yeah, yeah. red Solo Cups. They definitely did. No. No, none of that high v brand. Get me the Solo brand. No. Solo brand, baby. Uh, when a character takes damage from an attack, after resolutions, you may remove an action token from them. This gives everybody stiff upper lip, again. They, they be taking a lot yeah. from Earth X set, slash, specifically the Captain Britain dudes. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is your stiff upper lip, so when you take damage from an attack, you get to remove an action token from yourself. That's pretty solid. Now Technically, remember, you can't have this in combination with the queen, because if you could do uh, queen and yeah. king and like max of two and remove an action token when you take damage, um, but yeah, this is like I, pretty big. Do I want turn. my opponent to have two action? I don't tokens even know. Next turn? I don't even know if I would make an attack if if my opponent had the queen of cups in play and I had king of cups in play. I think we would just both clear and be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I don't like, know. Like, well, I mean, if you have both of them, but also, you know. If they've got like a big heavy hitter that's double action tokened, and you he's, just want to hope they up. don't hit willpower don't wanna, or whatever, I don't want to punch him though. Like if he's tokened up, and I could, this is again, it's great for me, terrible, you know, for my opponent to have it when I want to punch him. So it's like, man, I don't want to punch your figures unless, of course, they're all have no tokens. Then it's like, all right, field day, go for it. Then of course, then I get action tokens after I punch your guys. It kind of depends where the flow of the game is for this to be yeah. a really good effective card. Um, also, there's no cups; but there are two vases, or vases, whatever you want to say. Yeah, um, the same shape as all the other cups, though, which is yeah. But like, you don't consider what a vase strange cup. shapes they've been making no. these cups in. I don't know what they're on, bro. I like it's, uh, I like the Ace of Cups because that's like a goblet. It's a yeah. fancy ornate goblet, and then. Immediately yeah. after the Ace of Cups, they go to like the Ace of Cups, the, the weird, kind of like just a shape of a cup. shaped cups. Yeah. Again, no red solo cup meaning is instantly a one, but for his actual effect, situational. But if it works out in the right way, it's like a seven or eight. You know, it's better than most stuff. But again, yeah. it could so situational. It could be a four or a three sometimes. Just situational. It's the way it be. We're on wands, Simeon. We're almost done. We're almost yeah. done with the uh, almost with done the with powers. the main set. The the, yeah. the the non major arcana. Um, so the Ace of Wands. First of all, cool artwork. It's got like a cloud fist coming out. I think it's Bay the Blood Moon's hand holding like a that, what, oh. tree branch. Would that not be would that not be Red Root. He's got he's red skinned. No. Well, it's got like the a bandages tree thing. though. Oh, she bandaged up. Let me look at Red Root. Bay cut herself. Well, she's like the one that. that's like mummy wrapped. Oh, Red Root, there's no space. Red Root. Red Root, Red Root. Same p- yeah, potato, dude. Uh, good, good. No image. Ah, beautiful. HC Realms to no image. Oh, there's uh, one. Oh, he's, he's got, got green hands. He's got tree, tree hands. Dang, yeah, he's he's like got green ant. hands. Oh, um, very red of you, bro. Think, yeah, Bay's got this like. She's got like this mummy of a gun. It is Bay the Blood Moon. All right, I bow down is before it, the Simeon Bruce, the all-powerful it, um, Sindar the Knower. I'm actually not sure if it's Bay the Blood oh. Moon now. I'm thinking actually, of somebody she's else. Actually, she's got gray skin with red gloves. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, of... Um, we're in quite the uh, conundrum here. No, I will figure this out because there, there's definitely... Is it one of the war. horsemen? War is like black. I know it's one of black the horsemen. Hands. Genesis and Apocalypse. Is? Famine? Oh, famine, famine picture. Pestilence? Can we, can we possibly picture. upload images of these at some point? Somebody, somewhere. You see your own clicks nexus, please. Pictures, Somebody, pics, please. Anybody, please. Anyone? Me... Oh, gosh. We're going to Bing? Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to Bing. We got to do it. We got to do it. <laughs> People can't see this. Obviously, this is audio format, but I just had a, I just witnessed Simeon's Bing homepage for a second, and it sent me back, and it <laughs> gave, me, uh, gave me nightmares. <laughs> to be fair, my Bing homepage is just the the generic news section yeah. i realize i do know but i don't still. i don't set up my home page as like oh I, I only go to my home page to get the news and i really need to see like everything from there Horse there we go all right we've got famine oh no, oh, no famine for pestilence. us oh, that's, pestilence. that's gotta be it right nope Nah, it doesn't look like it though. Got gray hands. Uh, gray a lot hands. of bandages though. A lot I don't of know. So oh. this was who I was thinking of because like the big red 
bulb. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, so not sure well, who the hand belongs to. You don't to. know who's holding the wood stick. Someone's it's holding a the wood mystery. stick coming out of a ace of wands. Water. The wand is something. Oh, the, uh, all the olive branch, maybe they're offering. Um, yes. Anyhow, this is damage powers. Ace of wands. When a character uses ranged combat expert, makes a ranged combat attack. Once per attack, you may reroll any ones in the attack roll. Pretty you good. Know? If you would have told me there was an effect based around range combat expert, I would have assumed maybe dealt penetrating damage or maybe modify like damage plus damage one or plus, plus one. two. Yeah, yeah instead like of modifying it, attack and damage plus one, you could modify. Like I would have either plus two. Yeah, that would have been wild. Whoa, <laughs> what yeah, an idea! Crazy. Oh, but like I would have never said in a million years it was reroll a one and roll. Like, I will that's say not where my mind for reroll effects. Went. Assuming I'm using range combat expert. Um, which isn't like super common of a power. It's it's common enough, but I don't always have it. But like this means on a crit hit, I can reroll both of the ones. Uh, and then and also like you know if I roll like a one and a three, I have the potential to to actually hit. And this is an addition to a prob. I'll say it's a four. I'm not like building a ton of range combat yeah. expertise. I think there's enough heavy hitters out there that have range combat expert where maybe I put this on the team with them, but it's just fairly infrequent. It's it's not often enough. It doesn't do enough. Yeah, it's it's unreliable. When it pops up, you don't know if you're gonna be RC Ian. Yeah. I agree if you send me in. Alright, two of wands. Hit characters have battle fury until your next turn, even if this card is not in play. This is really good. Um it, you know, you hit this on your turn. It's no big deal. Run, I won't until your next turn. Yeah, that's a little rough. But I still, I still really like this. This can really mess some people up. In in sometimes, if you're playing against a mind control team, they might not even want to hit you. You know, it's like, well, shoot, I got one mind control off. Now you all have battle fury. It'd be rough. And if you're a ranged combat team, well, actually, yeah, if you're a ranged combat team going against a mind control team, now they all got battle fury. You shoot them up. And uh, they can't shoot you back. No ranged combat action. Yeah. It characters a battle fear until your next turn. That's insane. I love this card. I really like this card. I think Sorry. it's dope. This is one of the cards where when Tarot was first announced, this was like one of the first ones that was shown. I think not this the, heavy one, swing. Not one of the first dude. ones, but this was like fairly early on. Um, this was one where I was like, yeah, like Tarot cards can easily disrupt like a Thanos build. Like, everyone's complaining about Thanos, that he needs, like, an errata, blah, blah, blah. Or they're complaining that he doesn't need an errata, but, like, just straight up hitting him. Don't even have to deal a whole bunch of damage. You just hit him. Um, don't even have to deal any damage, I guess. You just, you know, in cap, whatever. And then you give him Battle Fury, and so he can't use his, like, impressive range. He can't use his mind Ooh, control. True. He has to get close up next to somebody. So, like, this one, the... Um, what was the uh, the stealth one? So three of wands. Uh, this is characters that can use support may also use it as free, which is something I always love about support characters like Dr. Claire Finn and um, whoever else could do this because there's like several. Uh, but yeah, Dr. being Frank. able to use support as free, really solid. Um, Ferdinand sadly doesn't get a like benefit from this, but uh, yeah, I actually I had to tell a newer player. Um, he rolled a two on his support roll. So, like, he, he hit the attack, quote-unquote attack. It's not actually an attack roll. But he hit, like, the, the right roll for the support roll, and then he rolled the single D6 and rolled a two, and he's like, so nothing. And I was like, no, no, no. You get a heal, too. And he was like, no, it's, it's like, it's reduced by two or something. And I, like, pulled out the PAC, and I was like, look here, you little, you little dirtbag. It's minimum two. <laughs> No, I didn't do that, but but yeah, it was fun. Um, he ended up going on to beat me with uh, the Wonder Woman 80th, 275 point Superman, and the uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange Supreme because I let him heal oh. Doctor Sa Strange Supreme back up to full, and I was like, ugh, that was stupid. But that's gonna mess you but up. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to the kid, you know. Well, like, no, of well, course not. He's the one that made the call to support him, which was a good call. But yeah. Yeah. Um, can use it as free. So if you think support is a power that you want to use during a game or might use during a game, this isn't bad. You could move action next to the person and then support 
potentially heal them as long as they're not next to an opposing character. It'd be great if it was like characters that can use support may free heal adjacent character one damage. If it was that instead, I'd prefer that way more because support is kind of hard to pull off with all the caveats that it has. Um, but now the, the four of wands. Now this is some good artwork. This is uh, the like horseman full on. This is like fighting. actually this insane battle scene. It just looks so dope. Like this artwork, this might be the best art art we've You've seen got so war far. With man. the giant flame, you've got um, annihilation and death. Pestilence, pestilence yeah. with like the big like skull and like skull, cloud smoky of pestilence. cloud. Yeah, yeah. They're ripping up these generic like silhouette dudes. Ah, it looks. It this actually looks amazing. Like I would want this as like a full artwork poster. A room. Yeah, you know, like this thing's dope. Make a great uh, splash so, page if it's not already. Like a great phone background. Like this, this thing is awesome. You know, uh, when a character that can use exploit weakness makes a close attack after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character adjacent to the hit target. Sky Tyrant, eat your heart out, my guy. This yeah, is this pretty is pretty good. good. It's a it's the same thing as the penetrating psychic blast card, but for exploit. This is, uh, continues the trend of close powers and you know range powers getting like relatively exploit, the same effect. Exploit might be like edging out Pensai a little bit. I think just it because is. Well, we're very much in a close combat game. I I think without a doubt the game is more if they close combat than it's made ever been. like. I don't know if they made something combo with running shot that made it like a flurry version of range combat. It'd be different, but. The fact oh, that I can deal totally. double the damage, but they damage know that way, charge. way too strong for that. To yeah, because they don't. Yeah, they already oh. think range is too good. But hey, this, no, this stuff is, is a, great. This is this a, solid, a great card. Solid card. But again, remember, your opponent might get the same same use. But uh, yeah, this is this is dope. I would say this is an easy seven eight card if you got exploit on your team. Awesome to get all this free damage out. Amazing. Yeah, that card plus that quake card if you got a sky tyrant heavy team or whatever. I mean, oh, both dope. this is one of the ones where it's like, you know, Franklin, Sicarian. Anytime I used Franklin, I was often grabbing Flurry. And if I had Flurry oh, and sure. got like, you know, if I got charge and like Wolverine gave me Flurry or something, then I was picking Exploit or I was picking Precision Strike like that's every fair. single time. So that's a great card for that kind of situation too. Um, the Five of Wands. So, ah, uh, Yes. Uh, the five. I'm pretty sure I did so, this team building exercise one time at summer camp. Yeah, this is a name a ki- name one of the kids at summer camp egg and then beat him with some sticks. I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah. No, this is the five. It's, it was my favorite so this one. Is Proteus egg elixir. Uh, hope. I think it's like the hope character to me. maybe, and then I can't remember the last one. I I just can't. Um, she's technically more important than Hope, but I mean, at this point, who isn't? So, yeah. Uh, hey, hey, there was a time in comics where Hope was like the most important character, yeah, all right? Back don't, don't when she had a jetpack and laser vision, she was yeah. like, I'm the she was rocketeer. Cooler, not designed by a loser. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when oh, this character uses <laughs> enhancement, five of wands, when you use enhancement, also modify the attacker's attack plus one. So, unlike the close combat expert, range combat, or unlike the, um, not close combat expert, but I mean, yeah, that one too. Unlike the combat reflexes and ESD and all the other powers that are giving you like a plus one, this one is really cool because this turns every enhancement. So, if I have three enhancements on one character, like I'm running some fates, I'm also getting a plus three attack. And, like, that's pretty easy to do, doing a bunch of enhancements. There's a lot of support characters that have multiple enhancement, or, like, not multiple enhancements, but, like, have enhancement, perplex, outwit, prop, whatever, some sort of combo of damage powers. And so the fact that, like, you could have an enhancement and modify attack, potentially do that it's twice, good. it's nuts. This card, I think, is really solid. As far as, like, a ranged combat heavy team, like a shield team, anything that, you know has more than one enhancement built into it. I think this card's a must play. So I'm going to give it like a nine because it's crazy to like just 
flip a card and suddenly not only are you doing plus three damage, but you're also getting a plus three attack or something. I think that's pretty solid. Yeah. No, I really like it. Nanny. Next up. Little nanny boy. Little nanny on the little horse. Then you can see in the background, it's people that were holding up the sticks from the last <laughs> from the last card. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, beating people with we're, sticks, we're, yeah. Yeah, exactly, bro. And they're about to beat nanny. This is moments before a terrible accident where they, they kill nanny and they crack open his eggy yolk and make breakfast. And it's very sad. <laughs> it's a very sad tale. Uh, when a character can use prob uh, when a when a character can use probability control on an attack, it may reroll a single die instead of both dice. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie Guerrero. Guerrero. Everybody's Eddie. Everyone's Eddie Guerrero. Everyone with Rob man. is now Eddie Guerrero. I want people to bring back print and play just so I can make custom artwork for all of these. My Toby Keith King of Cups. My Eddie Guerrero Six of Wands. Eddie Guerrero riding like, a lowrider instead of a horse. Yes, instead of the instead horse. Of That'd be so horse, awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, it's I like good. this card a lot. It's really good. Obviously, it's just as good as Eddie Guerrero is, and then it makes everyone with prob Eddie Guerrero for a turn and crit missing your opponent, stuff like that. Yeah. This is easy, like the a reason seven, why eight. Eddie's prob card. was so good is because, yeah, you could roll like a six and a one. Instead of re rolling both, you could just yeah. have them re roll the six, which infinitely messes with their chances of like rolling something good. Um, the one problem is it's not die replacement, so like they can prob it after that, too. But if they can't. If they're not willing to use their prob, then yeah, it's pretty cool. I always liked it whenever I played Eddie. Uh, sure. Seven of Wands. So we have no sevens. We have no wands in this image. We just have Wolverine with three claws out doing the like come hither kind of like he's about to like stab you or something face. Um, when a character uses shape change, which Wolverine is known to do, increase the result of the roll by plus one. Super good. Just like the sh just like the super senses one was, um, you can have both of those on the same like five card deck because this is a wand and that was a uh, cup. So you can do both of these shape change, pretty solid getting a boost. You can do scrolls shape change tarot card and the normal shape change, and you succeed all in like that one turn, like on everything but a two or a one. And yep. just like the like the super sense one is like super nuts. Again, like all these rollout cards go great on a super scroll team. And of yeah. course, this artwork is a uh, I don't know what issue this is, but it's a very iconic issue of Wolverine. I it's think it's very like reminiscent of like the Hulk reflected in his blade. Yeah, like Hulk reflected. That's what. It is. Yeah. Uh, normally, his like bl his claws would be across his face when he's like doing that, but yeah, it is like an iconic like kind of Wolverine thing. I think he like just doesn't like cardio, so he's always like. Come here. I'm over here. Get I don't want to walk here. over there. I got short little legs. You walk over here. I don't want. I don't want yeah, to go like, over. Oh, there. Well, I'll egg you on so that you come over here. All right. The eight of wands. This looks like some. Oh, this is weird. Cipher this warlock. Warlock. Yeah. Staff at attack. They're shooting out. Ah, this is. This is weird artwork. I haven't seen this one before. Um, but it's the same thing as the RCE one, but with close combat experts. So when a character that can use close combat expert makes a close attack. Once per attack, you may reroll any ones in the attack roll. This is weird, though, Simeon. I don't like this artwork. I mean, I don't know what to make. I mean, it's unique, I guess. It's different it's than all the other ones. Definitely coming from a panel. I just don't know what that. It's like, gotta be. Is. It's very strange, though. I am. I, mean, I am yeah, confused. It makes sense I will like not lie. Weird staffs were like attacking somebody or something. Yeah, and like, going oh, yeah, towards like something. doing a close attack kind of I thing. Can't go if, I can't tell if they're going to the left or going to the right. I don't know. Falling. All I can tell is going, there's eight of them. Up. There's, there is, I, there is eight of them. Uh, I will yeah. say I like this one more than the RCE one just because Close Combat Expert does stack with um, good old uh, Flurry. So the fact that you can oh, right, combo course. this with Flurry. Yeah, two shots at it. Yeah, when you make an, like a close this, attack uh, once per attack. No. So you, you send someone attack, out there. You do get like to a like, full charge. Ones. I tyrant, a full charge, uh, what's his face? US agent. You know, it's really good to have. Like they both have close combat expert traded. Oh no, sorry, Sky Tyrant no longer has close combat expert. Yeah, Excuse me. He had a power to them. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh but like a US agent can really, you know, benefit from this card. Any close combat expert piece. But I think especially one that goes way, way far out there. Can't carry someone with him. You need that. In case you roll one. Yeah. All right. The nine of Juans. 
Um, this is when a character uses an empower, you also modify the attacker's attack damage by plus one. Just like enhancement, I don't think empower is as easy to pull off because it needs like your support character up in the fray yeah. as well. But just like enhancement, I think if you've got a team that pops out a couple empower pieces, um, even like bystanders or whatever, I think this card would be worth it. I'd give it like a, a seven or an eight because I think there's enough bystanders out there with empower that like giving plus one attacks is pretty solid and it's definitely interesting. Like this card gets flipped and it like changes how you're going to approach like the next turn. Yeah, I agree. I like the card a lot. Next up, mind blowing ability of wands here. The first time each turn perplex is used, the chosen combat value is modified by plus two or minus two instead of plus one and minus one. This is a big risk, man, because of just how much perplex is in the game right now. Even if you run a lot of perplex, usually your opponent will have one or two perplexes of their own. Yeah. You've got to make your plus ones, your plus twos. I mean, your plus twos really got to count, bro. Or you got to take out their perplex yeah. probably or your negative twos. Yeah. You got to make that stuff land because, again, this being a double use can mess you up. I like it, though. It's strong, and I think it's balanced by the fact that it is for both players for sure. Man, this can be this can swing both ways. It's like a nine, an eight, nine card for me. I like the uh I like the artwork. Dupe's head, so he's doing a little shh, which is creepy and perfect for dupe. Um and then his head is exploding into ten wands, which is interesting. Very weird. Yeah. But it's neat. It's unique. Like, I can it? I can like dig it. What's it's not my favorite head? Control. And then it's like, ten what's wands. What's in your head? Oh. That's what's oh, it. we were going no, cranberries. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. Um, yeah. The Knight Wands. Wands. So, Knight of Wands. Ooh, we got a big old dragon with Jubilee on it. That must oh, be wow. Sho Shogo? Shobo? Yes. That's probably what Shogo looks like. Is that what he turns the into? The baby. No baby, baby. Yeah. Uh, beware the Jabberwock, I guess. So, this is when a character uses leadership, increase the result of the roll by plus one. So, in case you were worried that, you know, Realm of, what was it? Not Realm of Death. Uh, Blackheart and yeah. uh, Reign of Terror. Reign of Terror. In case you were worried about Reign of Terror, not only is there a re-roll single D6 one that we'll see later, but there's also just leadership roll is increased by plus one. So, uh, this is great for a ton of characters there's a lot of generated characters via leadership there's a lot of generated bystanders via leadership there's a lot of like cool effects that happen because of leadership um so yeah i don't see any reason why this one isn't worth playing i'd give it uh, like an, an eight and that's only because it's giving you like a 50 50 from what would normally be a 33 so it's not increasing your chances a lot but it's yeah definitely helping and the worst part is it also helps your opponent so depending on what they're playing it could also increase their leadership role and they might be running something even nastier but that's the night i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna say like the artwork's really cool i like it a lot too i like the big dragon it's very intimidating it looks very big it looks epic yeah the queen queen of cups queen of wands we get yeah. a uh we get a cape pride again some cool cape pride artwork again the queens always be sitting on the thrones man what uh, when a character rolls for an effect using a single d6 increase the result of the roll by plus one this is interesting it's not tied to a specific damage power or stuff like that but it's when you roll for an effect for a single d6 you get a plus one be darn solid yeah but yeah so oh queen was, of wands yeah, just here. like i was talking about with the uh yeah, the last role. card. Like, so this is your shape change. So you this is really even your stack. super senses, your blades, uh, your leadership, all that stuff. Yeah, you could Real really, good. really stack the um, D6 reroll. Kind of I stuff. assume this is like meant to help balance stuff out by making it part of the damage set for, for like shape change or like, uh, yeah, shape change and what's it called? Leadership, maybe. Yeah. There's also impervious. There's also super senses. There's also blades. I don't know. But yeah, there's a bunch. It seems of like this is that. probably a good call. I think it's worth playing. Like I like it. Yeah. Any build. Me for how many single D sixes you roll? That's like a seven or eight card. I'd I'd rank pretty pretty high above average at least. Oh, I like the wording on this one. Uh, so King of Wands is when a character damages an opposing character with an attack. After resolutions, Remiav an action token. Oh, Remiav. Remiav. 
an action token. Quick Nexus uh, <laughs> typo, so, strike yeah. again. When a character damages an opposing character with an attack, after resolutions, remove an action token from them. It's good. If you have like a ton of characters that are going to be actioned up, uh, this was even better on like a Loki, Doctor Fate kind of situation where you've got a bunch of actions available. Um, if you honestly, it's like not even bad if you're only playing one character, because then, like, if that one character is making their attack worth it on this turn, they're removing an action token from themselves. That's good. Like, you just yeah. having actions removed from yourself are pretty solid. Um, can you plan on this? No, not really. Like, it's possible, you know, you get double actioned, uh, don't hit wheel, willpower, and then you drop this card. And then it's like, well, I'm not damaging anybody, and my opponent has an option to. But I'll give it like a six. I think it's really flavorful and really cool. Um, I think it's great option to be able to remove action tokens for doing something you want to do anyhow. But, yeah. Right on. Then we've got and the... And us begins our... The page. Our trek. We've got the page oh, yeah. of... Uh, Time to do all of the, the pages. <laughs> Good job. Good on yeah, us. We'll do the page of wands. Page of wands. The first time... Oh, this is the uh, the magic floaty fire around her and stuff. This is also dope artwork Limbo. that I, kinda, I mess yeah. with. First time each turn outwit is you. You choose two powers instead of one on the same target character. This is so gross. Being able to outwit two powers on the same person. So nasty. I... Imagining this on like a team that has you know more than one outwit, two or more is just super gross. Imagining this on like a secret six team, it's like, oh, I have. Let me check this. No powers. To be fair, it's only the first time, so it's not like super super gross. It's somewhat balanced by that. But, uh, double outwit, increasing your outwit pool like that is really really. Good. I'm I'm giving this like a seven, pretty solid seven eight ish. I would say. And it depends. A lot of cause really good energy. if it's drawn on your turn. Time. This is one of the few that I'm going to say well, for sure doesn't help your opponent that much cause because then you can't I'll outwit probably their outwit. outwit their outwit, and, and then, then one of the else. other powers as well. Like, yeah, this is like perfect for that. You know, because how many times have you just been like, man, I really want to outwit that dude's charge, but I know he already has outwits. So if I just outwit charge, he just outwit my outwit, and then he gets power back, and it's like whatever. And it's like, ha, 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 I outwit, you're outwit, and your charge, and a check, and mate, good sir. Be nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, because we forgot about them, we'll do yeah, the, the other one. three real quick. So the Page of Swords, uh, when a character uses Steel Energy, they heal two clicks instead of one. Great. Uh, there's Amazing. plenty of characters that Savalthi Vampire is, like, super cheap, has Steel Energy. Every vampire. Uh, any vampire, yeah. That heals rogue. past their starting line. Oh, that yeah. rare rogue. So fun. Healing two clicks instead of one. Stupid good. Um, anybody that, like, bottom dial has steel energy. Uh, I can't remember who I was looking at recently that has... The last two clicks are stealth, steel energy, regen, outwit. I want to say it's apocalypse, but I can't remember. Um, but yeah, healing two, especially on, like, a stop click... Stupid good. Next Page up. of Cups. Oh, so I'll say like for the yep. for the steel energy one, I'll give that a nine out of ten one. because there's certain builds that like that's just kind of broken on. It's like really, yeah. really good. Uh I Page agree. of Cups. Similarly I can use regeneration. They also use it as free. Way better it's than that support disgusting. one. Really good. Way better than support. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, this might get drawn like first turn for you, and you're like, oh, well. That's useless, but you never know. If it, this happens up later game, you know, turn three or four or something, take some damage, re-regen, so nasty, so good. It's like a, I don't know, I would say this is like an eight, at least, on the on the cards. Free regen's yeah, awesome. Definitely. No, and then uh, we got Wolverine and Storm falling into like a pool of blood. Like Very drowning interesting. Drowning in a pool of blood, like, yeah. Drown, yeah, drowning pool of blood, yeah. It's weird, because it, like, it seems like a little tiny puddle. I don't know, the, like the... The scaling on it's like weird for me. I don't understand it. It is really weird. They look tiny. They look like they a little itty bitty. Yeah, people. they look like they were Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and like dropped into like a a little tiny Kool Aid spill or something. But I don't understand it. All right, and then finally, uh, this one's probably the one that actually this is the one that reminded me that we were missing some because 
I didn't see it, and this one's really important. I think this one's it really, stands really good. Out. It really stands out. The Page of Pentacles. So this is characters can't use improved targeting abilities, period. Characters that have stealth, that can use stealth, uh, have free place this character in a square of hindering terrain within six squares. So not only does it give you a free, like, zoop up six squares, as long as there's hindering on the map, it also just blanketly removes improved targeting from any opponents that might be able to see you in stealth. So if you have a big stealth, like, boosted team, like, I don't know, for example, playing Black Widow from War of the Realms and Avengers, um, this gives your whole team the ability to, like, free get placed six squares up, but then also gives your team, like, the ability to not get shot from all of the things that improve target through, like, hindering. Because um, this also affects, like, pulse wave and stuff. Um, the characters can't use improved targeting, so that means no pulse waving through hindering. Uh, like, it's not protected pulse wave. It's not, like, stealth that's protected pulse wave, but they just straight up can't target through it, so... It's very strange. I guess they could still target through it because that's it would a turn off my stealth. Wheelhouse, my guy, it would turn off stealth. So yeah, it would turn off stealth. But yeah, did you get the plus one D. But yeah, no, no, because it goes by printed defense. So mm. it wouldn't do that. But like you wouldn't True. be able to. So, uh, yeah, to do other things like um, I don't know. What Simeon? Like what? Improved targeting hindering. I guess. Mm. You wouldn't, okay, so here's one. I wouldn't you wouldn't be able to curious. giant reach into hindering because giant reach also go. gives you improved. Does hindering. require line of improved targeting hindering. So yeah, give, if yeah. I if I try and colossal reach somebody three squares away and they're in hindering, no, 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 I'm in stealth and you can't use oh, improved targeting happening. abilities. Also, colossals can't shoot out of adjacency, which is pretty funny because then you can have like your mystique run up to I don't know. Um, Fulcum Abominus and Fulcum Abominus can't shoot away from her because no improved targeting, so can't shoot out of adjacency. This this card single handedly, I think, so is good. probably one of the best ones to build around. If there was a single card to be like, yeah, I'm gonna put a bunch of stealth or like stealth adjacent stuff on my team purposefully because of this card. So yeah, I think this card is uh worth building around or building with it in mind and then yeah like you definitely want to pull it at some point during the game probably like past turn two or like turn two maybe later um definitely don't want to pull turn one and waste it but even then turn one i mean you might be able to move your whole team out six squares so that's something so it's even then it's not a huge waste i'm gonna give it a 10 because I think it's the think best it's card that we have. Time. I think it's I, pretty darn amazing. I think it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. But a must play for me on like a U.S. agent, Sam Wilson, Captain America type team. Build. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. Like huge reach. So good. All right. Uh, first up, we have Iggy, the fool, young Cable, kind of prancing around. I don't know. He's just kind of like, look at me, like, I'm very foolish. About to fall off a ledge and die. Yeah, or I don't know who I don't holds know. a gun like that, but I mean, whatever. He's just not, very... not super safe, but yeah, he's being, he's being a little foolish. He's being, he's not very, being very extra right now. about like his, his uh, posing. Yeah. He is, though, um, which is fitting for the Major Arcana cards. For us, I guess, I don't know. Characters can't use the effect of equipment. Dang, that's good. And dang, that can really hurt you, too. So if you've got no equipment on your team, and obviously you maybe expect to go against some, this is a really good card. It's like changes a ton of stuff. Someone's got emotional modifier. Nope. No, they certainly do not. Someone's got, you know, Sakarian Iron Man has the cloak. No, they certainly do not. This is pretty wild. You know, uh, <laughs> your opponent's got double scarab. Well, they got nothing now, losers. Kind of funny. Like, I don't know. I think it's pretty neat. Can't use the effective equipment. That's just hilarious. I think it's really, really good. Again, if you don't have equipment, this is like a 10 card. It can mess up a ton of opponents. It's like 9, 10, you know, but it's still so good, in my opinion. Really good. Yeah, Ooh. I agree. As far as like the major arcanas go, this is definitely one to keep an eye on because it just does a lot for for no reason. <laughs> like, yeah. It can really disrupt. Like, there's whole teams built around like the equipment that they have on it, and so that one can just disrupt those for a whole turn. 
Uh, the High Priestess is the next one that we're going to go with. Once per turn, each player may re-roll a single D6 in a friendly character's roll, including a single D6 in an attack roll. So this is leadership, willpower, uh, blades, breakaway, uh, impervious, super senses, attacks, you know, shape change. Like, literally, once per turn, each player may re-roll a single D6 in a friendly att- character's attack roll including a single d6 from attack roll. So the opposing character can do it, but like also you have double rollout, like double double rollout on opposing turns because you yeah. can re-roll your uh, potentially your shape change or super senses. I think this mm. is super good just like the other like boosts to those rollouts were. Um, this one is like flagrantly just way better because it affects leadership, willpower, whatever you need that turn. This is, like, there for it, you know. Uh, and, like, your opponent gets the benefit from it, too. But I think it's a little bit less beneficial because you you built more towards it. So you have, like, the leaderships, the leadership roles that you want to hit. They can't re-roll those. Um, it's friendly True. characters. So, like, yeah. on your turn when this activates, you'll be able to re-roll, like, your leaderships, your willpower, or whatever, like, is hey, the really and big important one. This for an opposing role. It's got to yeah. be all your stuff. Yeah. This is another one that's really good for Thanos. He can reroll a single D6 to uh to choose powers gems, I guess. Yeah, either his willpower um, or his gem roll. Yeah. Kind of depends. Yeah, like I would probably say, you know, double tokened, all right, reroll the willpower roll. Get a poopy gem roll, reroll that roll. It's good for a lot of stuff. I have another one to remember. Helps your opponent just as much as it can help you. Yeah. Except for sure. Big old big old strong. Rank. Attack rolls of 1-1 one, one are not critical misses. Attack rolls of doubles that would hit are critical hits. Now, this is a doubles card that I actually do like. Um, this is very uh, Batman 66 Biff Bang Pow special power. If you remember that one, Simeon, it was any double rolls at all that weren't 1-1, one, one, so even a 2-2, two, two, were critical hits for, like, Batman oh. and Robin. That was an insane trade. One, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, it was one of my favorite powers they handed out. I'm like, dude, that's... That makes me want to roll, like, I mean, doubles are always usually good because they're a high number, but this is, like, actually good. So, typically, this is going to be four fives, basically just this is your chance of critical hits, you know, rolling double threes, not necessarily a hit. You still need to hit, and again, it still has to be doubles, but it's a crit hit with doubles. So, it's better than the last effect that's double-related. But it's still, again, you're banking on rolling doubles. It's more so nice that 1-1s aren't crit misses, I guess. So it's it gives crit miss protection. It's doing enough that I think it makes up for not being consistent, not being able to totally pull off, you know, rolling doubles and all that jazz. I do like it. I'd say this is still like a, I don't know, maybe a 6 or 7. It's still very luck-based. You know, you could pull this and literally have none of the effects ever come into play. So it's very middle of the road, but you know, saving you from a crit miss with no theme props or something like that is very helpful. Yeah, I think it's it's one of the more fun ones casually to pop up. I'd agree. Yeah, it's not like crazy, like competitively. I don't know how you plan on it, but casually, it's like really fun to like see it in play. Um, really can potentially change the dynamic of a turn. All right, next up. Should have bundled all these together, but we're not going to. Oh, we should have. Um, yeah, whatever. This is Wheel of Fortune. It's the first of several that we'll see. All of the tarot or all of the tarot cards that deal with mission points are the major arcana. Um, so that's Elizabeth Braddock. Is that like Captain Britain Frog? Monkey and Captain Britain Frog? Frog and Monkey. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, that's what it looks what's like happening. But um, this is Wheel of Fortune. So they're spinning the wheel. I guess I don't know. It's cool artwork, but uh, this is when a character attacks, that character's controller gains one mission point for each time the attack is re-rolled by an opposing effect. I don't like this for mission points, but I like this because it, it, on a mission point team, it gives your opponent the choice of, do I want to let them hit, or do I want to re-roll it and give them a mission point? And, you know, if they yeah. re-roll it once, they're probably not going to re-roll it again. Like, if it hits the first time, hits the second time, what are the chances they're going to try and, like, keep giving you mission points? At a certain point, they're going to be like, ah, this guy's already got, like, eight. I don't really want to give him two, so I'm just not going to re-roll it. I'm going to take the damage. 
or it gets down to like a pinch point where they really need that character around and then they have to prob it like three or four times they burn all their theme team props or maybe it's like a big alpha strike and they burn all their theme team props and all of a sudden you have five mission points right away uh and it doesn't say it doesn't say the attack has to hit. It just says every time it's re-rolled by an opposing effect. So, you know, it doesn't count for dice replacements. But I I think on a mission point team, on like a wrecker specific team where you're carrying up and you're dropping oh, yeah. people off and stuff, very good. I think this is like an eight or a nine on that style. On any other team that's not mission point focused, this is a zero. It will do nothing for you you will never win by mission points from tarot cards tarot Very cards true. alone i should say yeah tarot cards alone yeah like so that's, yeah if you're not, not playing on that. a that's tarot like, card centered team do not put er, if you're not playing a mission point centered team don't play mission point centered tarot cards because it's it's the fool it's foolish um but yeah it's a very good card for the specific build that it works with all right next card temperance again this has the same artwork of like genesis annihilation being that split but since it's like angel and archangel i think it's way freaking cooler this is like another like a 10 for artwork for me it looks amazing come on right simeon like normal oh, yeah. angel archangel really like 50 the, like 50 split, split uh like in the stained glass oh and like death seed so good yeah so good oh my gosh all right this is also Really good uh, mission point card for, like, you know, Wrecking Crew again. The standard character successfully breaks away. That character's controller gains one mission point. Maximum three per turn. Pretty solid, you know? You just break away. You got sidesteps, whatever. Try to make some breakaways. Get the extra move action. You're gonna tr- you want to do move actions to break blocking anyways on a Wrecking Crew type team. Really, really, really good. Got, like, a mission point team that's got Ultrons. A lot of them, Ultron drones, have sidestep. So it combos super easily, super well. I like this card a lot. So it looks amazing, and I think it's also amazing for my teams. It's like an eight card for me on a mission point team. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I think it's it's one of the there's we're gonna see a couple mission point ones. I think this this is like the best one for like guaranteeing mission points. The fact that it maximizes it three per turn. Probably it knows. tells you that it's really solid. It knows what it's about, dude. Yeah. It knows it knows you gotta max these bad boys out. Yeah, otherwise <laughs> you'd like spawn a bunch of people with sides that break away. Um all right, we got the devil. Uh the devil is Azazel or Cardinal. I'm not sure who, because they're both basically it's the same character. Um and this is uh when a character attacks after resolutions, deal them one penetrating damage for each six in the finalized attack roll. Uh, this is okay. It's very, very strange. Uh, if you have like a prob heavy team or like a dice replacement team, sure. Um, you don't want to give your opponent sixes in their attack roll, but like dealing them one pen damage, this is like very fun and casual. Not so much good at all in like a constructed, like, I don't know, any kind of competitive setting. Because it just it hurts you just as much as it does your opponent. It, like it actually hurts your like your team. It like physically damages your f- hero clicks. So um, I'm gonna give this one like a four because it's thematic, yeah. it's fun, but at the same time it's just bad. The only thing that I think would be really me, cool is if that chase Spider Man that makes you th- roll three dice or like can roll three dice, whatever. If there was like three sixes in that, and then you take oh three pen gosh. damage, I think that'd Ooh. be funny. Uh, but it would be actually be hilarious yeah for just that one scenario happening alone which is like once in a blue moon maybe even rarer it'd be awesome yeah i have seen like the what was his name um dormammu the the dormammu two by two that can yeah. roll three dice i have seen him roll uh three ones oh, three, three ones oh oof where it's like he's supposed to roll three dice and pick them, and then his like rolls can't be re-rolled. And so mm. it's, yeah, That's pretty good. Disgusting triple ones. Uh, speaking of the moon, though, we have Danny Moonstar, which I love how fitting that is. And then there's also a crescent moon that works with how her bow is. I just I love everything about this card. This is probably I feel like I said this a lot recently. Again, another ten on artwork for me. I'm 
freaking love the artwork. I love the, the moon. I mean, her name is Moon something, right? Moon's not like that's so dope. I love it. An opposing character is perplexed. Gain one mission point. That part I don't love as much. It's um, there's you know, there's still a lot of perplex in the game. So if they use perplex, like ah oh, man, am I gonna try to hit this dude? Am I gonna try to up my I feel defense? Like they just, if I do, they just don't. On like the turn where you have this, turn. they only have no, to go like one it. turn without using it. It's like yeah, I can't boost my defense. I can't like drop their defense. I can't boost my attack. But I mean, if they're if you're happens. built specifically for mission points and you're like already at like you know I I don't know let's say like ten eleven, your opponent's not yeah. gonna be like I'm gonna use both my perplexes, bump them up to thirteen. But I think if like, you are bad. like if this is like a first turn, maybe you have no mission points. I think they would probably do it, which can yeah. give you a nice lead. They they would just think of it as ah whatever. I'm only giving them two. But, you know, anything that helps get mission points. It kind of depends. I can never totally tell you what your opponent's necessarily going to think. But I like this card. The effect's not amazing. But for the artwork, I do really love it. Yeah, I agree. The Magician, uh, another card that is kind of nutso. I'm going to also give this one a 10. So this yeah. is the Magician. Uh, this is that Rasputin, I believe. Um the like cross lady yeah. lady colossus slash magic it's, yeah the like, future colossus lady person i don't know what's going on on the table but you know stuff kind of um, seems creepy no for it for now yeah she's got an infinity symbol just like floating over her head which also doesn't yeah. make sense but i don't get uh, it yeah characters have or yeah characters have mystics if a character can already use mystics, they deal one unavoidable damage instead. Uh, nuts. Literally insane. Yeah. If you build a mystics team specifically with like invincible, so when you give your opponent mystics with this card, you don't have to worry about it, and then your team deals one unavoidable to people with like uh, invincible or whatever, it can reduce pen damage. Um, makes those 10 point Lokis really nasty. Makes literally any cheap bystander whatever all of a sudden like i'm I, you know i flooded the t- like the map with bystanders and now all of a sudden this turn they all have mystics are you going to start attacking them and like wiping them out probably not because they are like they're just going to oh. deal you a ton of pen damage back um it's a great card and it if built you know, around like it with the uh, excalibur team be kind yeah. of fun i think a lot of Those them have protected mystics yeah like, you, yeah, you build yeah. around with like uh, either That's protected stuff, mystics right? or yeah. invincible or something like that. Uh, obviously, if like an opposing character has mystics already, you'll take that unavoidable. But I think it's a really solid card. It basically does two things that uh, mystics used to be able to do, which is copies <laughs> it, and yeah. then also it's unavoidable. So it's just like old school mystics take me, again. Take me back to the good old days. I'm feeling nostalgic, baby. Yeah. All right. We have the Empress here, uh, which is uh, Lalandra, chilling. And this card is put into play. Each player generates a hindering terrain marker anywhere on the map. This card leaves play. Each player may heal one click on each friendly character occupying the terrain marker. Kind of just choose a space that a person yeah. is already in, and then you just leave them there. I you know, like it's this. not it's not some big. Oh, I must get a trek to the to the terrain marker for my heal, as if I'm climbing Mount Everest. For that sp- of damage. I'm I guess the only like, reason nah. I would like this, uh, put in play, generates a hindering terrain marker anywhere on the map. Both people just get a heal. A when click. this card leaves play, yeah. each player may heal one for each friendly character. Unless you try so to the only reason somebody? I would like this is like my opponent generates it. I draw the card, my opponent generates theirs somewhere, and then I have like my molecule man t- turn theirs into blocking. I'm just like, no, you don't get a heal. That's the only reason also I like this. Hindering terrain, though. They don't necessarily even have to be in that square. They could just be anywhere in hindering terrain. It's not even that Heal square, though. For each friendly character occupying hindering terrain. Oh, that's even yeah. worse. Depending on the map. Yeah, like, depending on the that map. That could be really, so, really bad. It's, that's crazy. Yeah, I thought really it was like specifically up. that one hindering marker, but... Oh no no no! Yeah, it being it also gives hindering. you that I guess. So for a map that has like almost no hindering terrain, you get the one piece. So it's you kind of got to be smart with your map choice, I guess. I'll be playing this on like Wakanda from ADW or whatever. Yeah, you know, that, like, like plus two range, or no plus yeah. three from range, right? Plus no, three plus from two. range, yeah. 
it increased the, the yeah, increased the hindering. Yeah, the hindering. hindering. Yeah. hindering bonus, That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. What do you rate this card? I'm like, super indifferent about it, man. It's so it situational. Seems, it seems like super bad, but like I, it also I, feels like I'm missing like a situation where maybe it's like stupid good. Yeah, it's see, it's one that leaves play. You typically, if you draw this, it's going to be your turn. So then you really can't do anything to like TK or move your opponent out of hindering terrain if they're already in it. It might just be a down the road five. It affecting both of you makes it really tough. Yeah, to rate that card. It's like a it's desperation weird. kind of card because, I mean, you don't want to have be you don't want to have been damaged by like turn three or four anyhow. Um, but if you right. are like healing one, might not really put you back over the top or anything. Um, next up, the Emperor. So this is Emperor Vulcan uh, sitting on some sort of Shiar ish throne. Uh, when this card is put into play, each player chooses a friendly character with the highest point value on their force. While this card is in play, the chosen characters have the colossal damage symbol and safeguard outwit. We played this in our um, Clicks Busters. Our tarot card Clicks Busters. Clicks, Clicks yeah. Busters, yeah. I forgot the name that we chose for that. Uh, we played this one in the Clicks Busters uh, fairly early on, and I, I think this one's really good. I think if you're... You, I mean, you obviously know what your highest point character is going to be going into the game. Um, if they die, then that's rough, and like you probably don't care about like tarot cards at that point because you lost your yeah. highest point character already. Uh, but yeah, if you get to turn five, like you might be able to put this guy in. And getting colossal symbol and safeguard outwit is pretty cool. But what's even cooler is having your opponent all of a sudden be you know skyscraper size. And you can yeah. shoot them from anywhere, and that's really helpful. That's really cool about um, it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think it's a solid card. I'm gonna give it like a six and a half, seven, because I don't know how often you're gonna put it into play. Just because it do, this does give like your opponent, you know, they might have a really solid high point figure, and you just give them yeah. colossal and safeguard outwit. They're likely outwit. already gonna have safeguard outwit if they've got like a big dude, but. Who knows? Maybe not. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a solid card. It's fine artwork. It's not great. No one, no one's clamoring for uh, Emperor Vulcan. Ah, oh, yes, the Hermit. Ah, Hermit of Purple looks very uh, familiar to a card we've already seen for some reason. How weird. Uh, when this card is put into play, each player places a friendly character from anywhere on the map. Into their starting area. The starting area is purple. Hmm, interesting. Coincidence? I think not. JoJo reference. Thank you, WizKids. Anyways. Hermit. Purple. <laughs> the Hermitage. The I don't purple. like this, man. I... Maybe if I have, like, a low tier, like, a lot of low friendly characters. It doesn't say standard. So you could put, like, a Pog, a Paparazzi or something in your, you know, posing, you know, in your area. Um, your starting area. And maybe it could help slapping a you know starting a figure back to your opponent's starting area again they 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 choose no no yeah yeah you choose your friendly character so friendly, it's like yeah. you're just friendly gonna choose the one that's from not anywhere on the map bad. in the starting area it right could, so like get you out of dodge kind of situation also true like if you're you'd have to be up on points and like really in a bad situation for this to like matter um but like yeah you get it. the just best option is like your opponent's playing you know, like a tent pole or a one man army, and you take out all the support, and then this card drops, and then all of a sudden they have to like zoom back to their like that's SMM best case off. scenario. Because otherwise, the fact, ah, but the fact that you have to do it can it can come at a really yeah, inconvenient time. It's just going to disrupt you. your like position. It really messed you up. Yeah. So uh, it's tough. Kind of tough what your build is. It's tough like when this pops up in the game. I think because of those risks, how it could really mess you up, it's like a three or four. I see the plus sides. I think the downsides for not knowing when it's going to come up is is rough. Maybe playing yeah. with like Arrow or something. Oh, you know who this give it would more actually work with pretty decent. Um, right. When this card is put in play, each player places a friendly character from anywhere on the map. Uh, this would work really good with the X of Swords. Um, Genosian, like bystander yeah there's no okay and then actually so in that case it just like, like instantly a 10 gets you four notion bystanders mission points. absolutely 
Yeah, I actually like that. that. It's amazing. That's actually really good for that yeah. team. There so, is, okay, so, so there, yeah, there is. I, like, I can see the use and I think for this it right is away. For all of these I'm, tarot I'm glad cards, you brought that up. There's going to be like one very niche case where it's just like you for know, sure. chef's kiss, really solid kind of thing. Um, it's just not going to be for everything. It's not going to be most of the stuff. Yeah. All right. The Hierophant. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. I'm positive. Uh, Hierophant never forgets. I'm pretty sure that's the saying. Uh, this is good old uh, Legion. Um, David uh, Xavier. Uh, the, the The, you know, Xavier's kid. Um, Fox TV show. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a better haircut in the card than in the TV show. So he's got a throne of his own of sorts. It's a <laughs> yeah. wheelchair with like a, almost a straight jacket kind of look. But the combat values can't be modified or replaced. Just straight up can't be modified, replaced. Uh, pretty solid. Um, it's, uh, it's very fitting the Hierophant uh, totally gets rid of energy shield deflection, modifying your defense. As you know, no one can deflect emerald splash emerald splash yeah. <laughs> yeah only the world can uh, get around that um, exactly i see through i see through you whiz kids i yeah. see what's happening yeah some jojo stands over there yeah uh, i will say this card is great for casual i think it hurts almost every team just as much as it helps it i don't like i think you know any team that uses defend any team that uses like Spider-Man enemy or whatever that's called Sinister Six. Is that what that team ability is called? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Sinister Syndicate. Yeah, Spider-Man yeah. Sinister yeah. Syndicate. Anything that like uses that kind of stuff. Anything that has um, close combat expert, range combat expert, combat reflexes. You know, any literally any modifier or replacement value, as it says, uh, for a whole turn. You're just like baseline stats and that's that can be rough for a lot of teams so if you can build a team that has a really good baseline stats and doesn't like benefit or doesn't like you know get hurt by this then maybe this is a good card for you i feel like most of the time it's better to like have teams that can use this and uh or that can use those stats and just don't play this i'm gonna give it a five because it is like a very hurts your opponent exactly as much as it hurts you kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's situational because you never know what your opponent's going to run. And now it's like, well, for me, I like stat modifiers. I want to have stat modifiers on my yeah. team nine times out of ten. So it's it's tough. Like, right, oh, but if they got a, like, a defense shell, I'm like, modify. yeah, well, if they got a defense shell, I can't guarantee my opponent's always going to be running a defense, like defend type. And so, it's, yeah, it's a little iffy. I agree. Next up, the Lovers. Give Dan. Says when a character attacks, finalized attack roll is doubles. That character's controller gains one mission point. Again, this kind of falls into the same. Uh, it's one of the weaker mission point cards that exists. Also, based on like doubles, which is just tough to pull off. There's not a lot of die replacement on mission point teams, I think, at all whatsoever, really. No. So it's this is like a one two for me. It's very if you're low. Building a team to die replace or to like roll doubles specifically. Yeah, um, you're Ugh. not building like a mission point centric team, and then you have to wait for this card. Like it's just what it does is so off kilter that it's not good. Yeah, because be like if it did something more than one mission point, like if it was like three or four, it might be worth like looking into like trying to make doubles happen. But most of the time, like making doubles happen. Trying to make doubles happen. Worth it. Doubles aren't going to happen. Yeah. Stop trying to make doubles happen. All right. We have the chariot. Uh, the silver. Interesting. Um, that doesn't look like a chariot at all. That looks no, it like, like a chair. Uh, yeah. Characters have flight. And that's it. Dang. Gives everybody wing symbol. Uh, great. But like, I love also this for a casual equally game. great for your opposing. But like I, for the I so love this in a casual game so much. The instant chaos that yeah. happens with everybody having. I think flight it's great so because you can potentially have, and it's like so random. It only really works in like a casual game, in my opinion. But you can have yeah. a team with no flyers, and then instantly half of your team can carry the other half. I mean, like the whole team can carry like the whole team essentially, but you know, only half at a time. Um, just like the switch flipping like that and for one turn is pretty fun. And if your opponent already has flight, then it's like, haha, I didn't. So I got something from this card. But really, it doesn't like doesn't do a whole lot. Oh, 
It's very basic, but it's and yet it's so fun. Yeah, it's just uh, it's unique and it's it's something that's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know what else they would have done for the chariot, but that one's yeah. pretty funny. It's cool. All right, cool. justice. Us, us. Uh, it's a little X-23 or Honey Badger or somebody, right? And then she looks like Lady Justice, which uh, I can kind of dig. I thought it she's was got like maybe the, uh... Echo. Well, it's an X-Men, and Echo's not an X-Men, right? So it wouldn't be. Well, she's in the set, though. No, she's in Avengers. She's Never mind. Yeah. What do you t- I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, but she's so, got, yeah, like, it's, uh, it's the sword, and she's got the Honey tail. Badger? That looks, I, I think Honey looks Badger, too yeah. too young to be Laura Kinney, but does, I can't yeah. really tell from that image. Um, so, anyways, Justice. When this card is put into play, each player chooses a friendly character. While this card is in play, the chosen character replaces their combat values with the following. 8, 10, 17, 3, and a range of 4. So it's 8 speed, 10 attack, 17 defense, 3 damage, range of 4. It's, uh, so now WizKids has finally given us what the base combat values they believe are. Yes, now we know. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, it, This is really neat. If this can come at pretty terrible times, if you have one figure left, pretty awful for you. If your opponent has one figure left, pretty awful for them. Um, if it's early game, cool. Uh, I think it's funny to make your paparazzi now be a 8, 10, 17, 3, like a thousand times better yeah, three uh, than it used to be. That's kind of hilarious to me. That is. Um, so yeah, this is a fun card. It's really cool. This is just, again, the randomness of tarot cards can really hurt you or help your opponent or vice versa because of how random they're going to be. I think it's super strong, though. So I think if you yeah. get ahead of it right away, if they got a temple type team, you take out a idea. bunch of people. If yeah. yeah, if you have an idea for how this will help your team, it can be very yeah. strong. I think if you got an idea for it, this on, be it's like, not going to do much. I would say like an eight or nine card. If you have an idea for when, like, if you got tarot on your team, you got an idea for when this card's getting in play, or like you know exactly how you're going to play this team. I what mean, you're with gonna do. tarot, you very you're really much good. control when this gets into play. Oh, very true. Like, I'm three. I guess turns, I probably never mentioned tarot. It can be. Even. Let's see, two, four, five. Yeah. So within three turns, you'll definitely have drawn it and then been able to be like put it at the bottom and pulled it again. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a solid. I would card. say in casual, this is like we might have to make a list like our top like casual cards because i i think this is like a number one casual card i think this is very funny yeah i also like, think like if this is like a card why i mean for all the other reasons as well why like there will never be like a 300 point one man army figure that actually oh yeah competitively it's something like this i mean obviously this is similar to like black leopard or whatever there's a bunch of other stuff that does this but if you go against like 300 point um God Emperor Doom, yeah. and all of a sudden he has eight speed, ten yeah. attack, three damage, seventeen defense. Ugh. He's not Ugh. as scary as he like once yeah. was, kind of thing. Imagine you know? this bad boy back in like Unimind. I guess Unimind can still perplex himself to high heaven, but like making him a, an eight ten. But 17. He, yeah, even actually, then, his values like starting, were already actually yeah, kind of that low. Values. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. maybe, maybe he does have like a nine on his last low. click for his attack. Yeah, so maybe not. Yeah. But anyways, that is justice. All right, then we have the Hanged Man. So this is... a Isle here. Yeah, when this card is put into play, each player may deal one unavoidable damage to a friendly character. If they do, while this card is in play, that character modifies their combat values plus one. I think and this card is instant awesome. Ten. Instant 10, amazing card. Love yeah. it. So not only an activation click for characters that need that, but then also... Mm-hmm. Um, it says each player may deal one unavoidable, so I don't think you have to. Yep. Uh, and then it, yeah, it's just, it's really solid. And then like plus one combat values, that's like one of the few ways to get a, you know, plus one range, damage, attack, defense, and speed all in one go. For what? For yeah. For no effort on your part for yeah, just like right? having this card. Awesome. Pretty solid. Love this card. And even then, it's as soon as the card is put in play. So once you see who your opponent chooses, you can do whatever you want to to like get them out of there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like plus one combat values. It's only a plus one to defense. You know, if you, hopefully you have means of dealing with that, or if your guy's got a plus one attack, then it's perfectly balanced. It works out. You just dealt them a free unavoidable. Maybe this gives you the edge to take out your opponent if they choose to do that, or your opponent just might not even choose to do it if this comes up on your turn. You know, so I love I love this card like it a lot. A ten for me. Yeah, I think it's probably I I'm gonna give it like a nine, just because I Fair don't enough. know if it works on every team, but I think it's it works often enough that 
it's pretty easy to put on a team. Right. Death. That's pretty simple here. Characters can't heal. Straight up. That's it. It's three words. <laughs> Characters can't heal. Yeah. Like the art. Uh the black dark horse. Uh look very uh it's like storm looking character, I guess. There's it, a it, like, a, looks like a, bishop. And a bishop and a Yeah, and it's storm on, on the ground. Horse. Yeah, it's very interesting artwork for this. Something strange um, is going on. So yeah. Not, not exactly clear what it is, but Yeah, characters can't heal. So again, this can mess you up. This can super mess your opponent up. It's a both ways type of deal. Ah, it's so strong. And because it's so strong, it affects both you. And this can, you know, this can hurt Thanos. This can hurt Thanos a lot. No free heals. Nah, -uh, not this turn. This can give you an edge. Maybe give you the tempo you need. Cool card. Really like it. Yeah, so, I agree. You know, it can hurt you. You know, just got to be realistic when it comes up. But this can be like an eight. If you don't like have eight, a nine. team that can heal, then. Okay. Oh, yeah. So oh, healing? Eight, nine. Throw it on team, baby. All right, then we got the sun. Uh, so we got big old Phoenix with a uh, young cable riding in the foreground, and big old Phoenix it's being kind of like, weird. The sun it's in the just, background. There's something about her that looks a little, uh, I don't know, off. I guess I can't she's really like put the, my the finger on it. The baby, where she's like, baby. I'm the sun now. Yeah, it looks Cable's very trying odd. to escape this horrific future he's entered, where Jean Grey's face is the sun. Yeah, uh, I'd run lines away of fire too, drawn to characters can't be hindered. Um. It doesn't nah. say it can't be blocked, but can't be nah, hindered. It's just hindered. So it's hindered. interesting. Cool. You get um, it. The sun is poking through the What's funny is like uh, if I played the stealth card and then you played this card, you could still draw a line of fire to me, even though you oh, can't sure. use improved targeting. It's like one card says can't use improved targeting, the other size color card says uh lines of fire can't be hindered. So they like balance, and uh, there's a happy medium where you can just shoot people that should be in stealth. But uh, no, it's it's a good card. I don't think it's worth playing most of the time unless you have like a heavy range team with no improved targeting through hindering, and then it's like yeah, yeah definitely slap it on. It's like an eight. Um, otherwise, for most teams, it's like a four because you you usually have ways around hindering yeah. already. I think. Art's really cool on it, though. It's weird, but it's like one of the cooler ones. Right. A tower is one big old tower, and it's all misses yeah. are critical misses. This so was a Titan scary tower one. The, the, the um, T pose at the top. And when Simi and I were doing our uh, tarot card game, for Clicks Busters, this was terrifying because I rolled a miss with the character. They were on their last click, and I needed to uh, prop it, or otherwise they would have died because all misses are crit misses. This is real good. This is, uh, I don't know, this is a really strong card. It can give you potentially a lot of free damage, but also it can really mess you up. It kind of scare you a little bit. So uh, yeah. be careful. Be wary. Stupid if good. And this uh, card hasn't come up yet and you know it's in your deck, you know, maybe save a theme prob or something, you know, be, uh, be a little smart. I think because you can kind of prepare for it most sort of than your opponent can, means it's a pretty good card to keep in your Darrow deck. Yeah. So, uh, this yeah, is one I of like those it. ones where you desperately want to have tarot on your team because mm, if yeah. you draw this card at an inopportune like time you can play like whatever the other card is otherwise yeah. if it's like a turn where you're going to end up clearing anyhow you put this into play and then it's like you know your opponent has to like you know either attack you or pass a whole it, turn man. and yeah. either option's real bad like that really shifts the momentum um, them missing even like one or two of those attacks is really nuts, but yeah. Next up is the star. Uh, results of one during attacks and breakaway attempts are six instead. Um, so yeah, <laughs> crit misses become crit hits. Uh, failed breakaways become successful breakaways. Pretty cool. Uh, it's and a, it's not even that a six becomes a one either. This is just no, straight up. It's just straight ones up or sixes one, one, now. Two, six, yeah. So uh, strong does help your opponent just as much as you, but right, you know, I if you've like got a lot of prob and stuff, yeah, you've got heavy prob. The only problem is it's a good card to keep on. Yeah, you, it gives them like, like a thirty-three percent chance of breaking away automatically because yeah. a one or a six would like successfully yeah. break away, and you know, a twelve or a two would automatically hit. So it does like yeah. really boost their ability to 
to do this all is the other a, things. Another yeah. top tier fun casual one, in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. A great casual card. I'll give it a five because it's so evenly balanced, but I uh, actually enough. a six because you can you can kind of sway it with like more prob and dice replacement than your opponent, but I'll give it a six. But it is super casual, like fun, where it's just like one of those wacky rules that a lot of venues would like throw in anyhow. Yeah. I think yeah, I think so. Next up we have Judgment. This one could potentially totally change how you build your mission point team. When a character heals, that character's controller gains one mission point for each click healed. There is no cap on this, ladies and gentlemen. There's no max three like the other mission point cards we've seen. However many clicks you heal, bada bing bada boom, ladies and gents, you get a mission point for them. That is insane to me. Like real energy and all this stuff, support. Definitely consider putting this on your teams. There's I can't honestly think of many mission point characters that have like a uh blurry steel energy part of their dial. I know Wrecker doesn't have steel energy anywhere. I know he does get flurry eventually. I believe Wrecker has re he does have regen on his stop click, so that is one thing to keep in mind. However, this is still a major arcana, so you're still fighting for the other mission point cards, but right. man, I like yeah. this one a lot. That's the big thing is uh, you're with like the major arcana being uh, one per deck if it's five, or like right. you know, it increases by one for each. So you can do um, eight. Yeah. Five, yeah, would, six, yeah. Seven. yeah. You could do an eight card deck with card four deck major card arcana two. and then like one of each. But like at that point, you're kind of limiting which one you're going to get the majority of the time. So I think with like some practicing, seeing which one pops up majo the majority of the time. Um, certain mission point teams, I think, could heal better than Wrecker or whoever, and we're obviously going to get more mission point figures down the line as well. So it's one that's definitely interesting, and the fact that it's not, like, max, it's not capping it, um, yeah. means that there's definitely, like, a way to, like, potentially make it broken, like, have a bunch of people heal in one turn. Um Sure. Like Fantastic Four, you know, if you can push like a bystander to death, or you know, like not push him to death, but get him caught in like an energy explosion or something, and then all mm. of the uh, Fantastic yeah. Four characters heal one, and you potentially get like six oh. mission points one turn. That'd be gnarly. Yeah. Oh, I really like that. However, no Fantastic Character. Which, uh, shame. Not yet. I mean, uh, not yet. You never know. She oh, Fantastic I guess that's four? right. Does wow. Once again, sleeping on Queen of Atlantis. Oh, We're going to hear flack for this. Uh, <laughs> the world, though. Um, this one, this mission, or yeah, this also mission point. This tarot card is uh, when this card leaves play, each player gains one mission point, maximum three for each friendly character in an opposing starting area. Uh, Ultron from... Um, Ultron Empire. Pym and yeah. normal Ultron both Ultron love this. Already gets, yeah, like this. He already gets mission points from being in like an opposing starting area and for each of his bystanders. So you just get like another one per like up to three if you're playing this card. So there's yeah. definitely like a place for this card. It just depends on the team. I think casually this is probably like way better than it'll be, ever be competitively. Uh, but oh, even sure, then, I think this might eventually have like a competitive situation because if you're playing that Kate pride, who's like making those uh, bystanders and you're trying to do a mission point that way, she has to like remain or like somebody has to remain in the uh, opposing starting area to make those bystanders. So, you know, you can make the bystander next turn, get two mission points because they're in opposing starting area and then send them back to like your friendly starting area to like get four mission points from them. So it's not, not, unfeasible that it's going to be good it's just a rough one to deal with because anything that requires you to get to your opposing your opposing starting area is kind of rough and uh so i'm gonna give it like a six i think i can see I, myself i'm gonna give it like an eight Simeon, because like there's so many mission point figures based around like being on either the opponent's side of the map or over in your opponent's starting area i feel like it's an eight it feels m most natural Maybe not the most natural, but pretty darn natural as far as mission point cards have went. It's like it just goes with how they're already kind of themed, in my opinion. Sure, yeah. I mean, I I think that it's definitely usable, so I don't disagree. Um, 
yeah, it's just currently it seems like rough because like I have not been building teams to like get in your face, getting like your opponent's starting area kind of thing. Um, but I mean, there are plenty of teams that do that. So the whole alpha strike strategy, uh, that is it. That is all of the tarot cards. Did it. We made through them all. What a great way to end it too with Zoorlo. Yeah, it was Another. a deal well, it's almost along. like it took uh took us about 50 days to get through that but at the end of it it was uh it was dio it was the world though at the end and we uh we finished it what a way to do it uh, all right guys let us know what some of your favorite tarot cards are in the comment section below if you're watching this on youtube or you can write into us like some of these listeners are about to you can write into us at either facebook.com slash dial h for clicks or on twitter at dial h4 that's the number four hero clicks com or on your little on little Twitter app on your phone, or you can write us an email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com, all spelt out. You can ask us listener questions or just let us know what you think of the episodes. With that, let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! These ones were sent, however, on Discord, and if you want to join the Discord, you can join Discord for about $5 a month. It gives you Discord privileges on our Patreon how you can interact with us. We do movie nights. We do Bad Samaritan. We $5 a month also gets you limited edition cool Dial H swag. It gets you behind the scenes looks. It gets you early videos. All these Patreon members have already seen Dial H for Hero Clicks Disney Plus pitch meeting. Ooh, ah, you haven't seen that yet. Crazy. I know. If you join the Patreon and be on our uh, Discord and all that, stream. or if they on the live stream, don't. Well, no. <laughs> You might have seen that now. Much. Now I got a private live stream. Look what you've done. Anyways, these are uh, some questions we got here, guys. So, Wing Sauce asks Titans, Teen Titans, or Teen Titans Go? Simeon? Uh, man. Um, not like, honestly, not a huge fan of Titans. I will say Teen Titans had one of like the best villain arcs in <laughs> animated, like, animated, uh, comic, like, relation kind of stuff, period. Um, not a lot of like great villain arcs and like, even like, you know, X-Men, Spider-Man, like all the ones that I can think of where they had like big villain arcs. Um, the one with like Slade where it's like Robin, like completely mentally destroyed by like Slade kind of situation. Uh, um, yeah, that was great. And that was teen Titans, right? Yeah. That was teen Titans. Um, that was teen Titans. Yeah. Teen Titans go I... has some really wacky fun humor. Uh, like I never watched the full thing or even like full episodes, but I did see like the one where Batman's like mind controlled and chasing after the Titans. And that's pretty awesome. Cause they like blow up yeah. his car and he like flies oh, out of like funny. the explosion with the motorcycle and they blow up the motorcycle and he flies out with like a uh, scooter and they blow up the scooter. And then he's just like on Alfred's back and Alfred's like sprinting at them like full oh, speed. Weird. Uh, okay, so there's I kinda, like I kinda definitely some that. good kinda stuff hilarious. in Teton Titans Go. Um, I think if you take away the whole, it's like, just keep in mind it's a kid's show. It's going to be wacky and all sure. that stuff. Like, you don't have to, like, uppity about DC lore and, it, like, kosher and canon and all that jazz. You get fun. I really enjoyed, I saw a clip that was, like, they become, they get rid of the IRS. And then they're like, oh, no, but we do need taxes to, like, roads and stuff. And then they, like old the justice league at like gunpoint and like they break the flash's leg or speedy's leg or whoever and like steal money from them and they just basically uh extort people for money for taxes it's uh hilarious so it moments like that have made me want to watch the show i I think it's on hbo max probably most dc stuff is i'm i want to give it a shot sometime before the batman set comes out i'll actually watch all teen titans go but since i haven't seen any full episodes of Teen Titans Go. I haven't seen any episodes of Titans. I guess my default answer for this question is the uh, non animated Teen Titans. Is that the live Titans action? Is the, is the live action one, yeah. Okay. The, I've been meaning yeah. to watch that too because I, I have seen a few clips of that and it looks like it looks kind of like tries to be too dark for its own good, but um, it instantly that first trailer where Robin <laughs> It was that little swear word. I'm like, all right, you're just an edge lord. I don't want to watch this show. Like that's that just made got, me like, so CW not want to watch vibes it. from it. But yeah, I just was instantly not interested in it. Uh, but that's Andrews. Also, nobody, Bill asked, nobody said somebody save me, and I was like, I can't watch a show if it doesn't start with that. Yeah, how am I gonna exactly? 
Bill asks, over under 0.5 people disqualified for cheating with their tarot cards at Worlds. I, I think, don't know. That's I don't know tough. if anyone will be disqualified, but I definitely think somebody's deck will be called into question. I don't think it's out I'm of the realm of possibility to think least... that a, like, a tarot card deck will be called into question at Worlds. I want to say at least 10 people get the judge called on them for sus tarot card deck activities. Shuffling, maybe looking at the okay. bottom. I'm gonna say ten. Not disqualified. I'm just saying the okay. judge is called. The judge is called ten different times about tarot card shenanigans. Not think, like the effects, but specifically how just people because are using of it. how many rules tarot card will introduce or like need to be like errated and introduce. I think yeah. they might just like ban them from competitive play after worlds. Like, I, I honestly think they might Dang, be like that's rotated a big out of modern ball. or banned. I think it just adds Ooh. way too much. Like, this is a miniatures game where it's never mattered how much damage Man. the miniatures or cards had. And then suddenly you're introducing a mechanic where it very much matters how much damage the card has. Like, it's well, not I a miniature, it's not a card, but, like, all of a sudden, it's... in a game where damage was fine before, suddenly not at all fine. Here's what I'm going to say, I guess, that's... I don't know if I agree with the extent of banning them after Worlds, but I also don't know. I haven't been competitively playing with mission cards that much since, and at all, you know, since they've come out. So I will say I agree with everything you said there, that it's a super flip the game on its head. They make it way more complicated. They make it uh, very, they cause a lot of weird rules, interactions with abilities and stuff. We've already seen this in the Heroclix rules chat group. We'll have a ton of weird interactions about tarot cards. So it's, it's kind of, to me, a Jason Wingard type situation that I think WizKids has put themselves in again, where it's like, great, now we have to, when every time we make a figure, we have to think about how it interacts with like each arrow card. There's 78 of them. You know what I mean? I feel like that's just kind of true. Same thing with Jason. Every time we made a bystander figure, now we're like, ah, oh, crap. Was it balanced with Jason? You know what I mean? So it's, it's tough. I don't know about getting banned. It's maybe benched. You like benching stuff, so maybe uh, arrow cards might be benched after worlds. How would that be? How is that? <laughs> Bench it until it rotates. Hard. Bench, yeah, they're benched until they rotate. Bench until it rotates, and then banned in silver. And then Beautiful banned in silver, yeah. That's that's what'll happen. Oh, man. Uh, I think one person gets to disqualified at least. I see three people getting disqualified for. Change. I could see, I could see one person being disqualified for sure. I could see yeah. somebody like legitimately just being bad at marking cards but also, like, trying to do that. And so it's, like, they make it, like, stupid Someone, obvious. Uh, like, bending a corner and being like, oh, what? It came that way. And it's yeah. like, sorry, bro. Or, like, nope. literally just scratching, like, the number one, two, three, scratching four. Something. Oh, my gosh. If someone does that, you are an idiot. You're bone, I you're bone somebody headed. being if that you dumb. scratch numbers one, two, three, But also, four, I could see them. somebody doing that to, like, make a point and be like, you guys don't have any rules against it. What are you going to do? And they're like, well, we oh, have a sure. rule about just And, and then they're going to have to be like, Great. Now we got to ban a cheater or, or like disqualify you. I would I I mean, actually. To be fair, WizKids does have like a rule. Like HeroClix does have a rule about just um, giving yourself like an advantage through cheating. And so okay. just because they don't explicitly spell out like every little way that you could cheat, like loaded dice, etc., doesn't sure. mean that it's yeah. not like, you know, a bannable offense or disqualifiable. Yeah. Okay. We were kind of some good talk. Then we came to a good conclusion. Hope that uh, answered your question, Bill. I do, you know, I'm going to be curious how much WizKids is going to be policing this and if they're going to throw down the hammer of justice when the time comes. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Murdoch is Brad asks, what are your top 10 scenes from She-Hulk so far? So there's all sorts of scenes. Um, also, I've only seen the first episode, so this is going to make this way rougher. Uh, Simeon, please don't answer anything from the second episode as I have not seen it. Also, people watching slash listening uh spoilers for the first episode of She Hulk. Yeah. You might want to might want to skip this. Yeah, just skip to the end of the episode. It's the end of the episode. episode because yeah. Um this will so just to rattle through them really quickly. Um, Again, I don't know if there are ten scenes, like actual scenes. No. The, so one, Hulk. the episodes are very short. They seem well, actually, really I will disagree a little bit with you there, Simeon, because I was expecting WandaVision type short episodes, but them being 40 minutes or 38 Are minutes. Are they the longer first than one, WandaVision? They were. Yeah, they were 38 minutes wow. was the first episode. 
the reason the first episode felt so short though was because a lot of it was just spent spent on that island and not there was nothing really happened you know what i mean not a lot was accomplished a lot was established not a lot happened i mean but even then like nothing happened in the first three episodes of wandavision and those felt like those felt oh, those, a lot longer than this. They feel like they dragged so long, like painfully yeah. long almost. I still liked them. I still I like old TV and I thought it was funny, but they I mean I I, in, I appreciated them. But yeah. like man, I would not ever watch those like first episodes again. Um yeah, so number one, not a long episode. Like Aquaman or Soldier were like fifty minute hour long episodes. Loki, fifty minute hour long episodes. Same thing with Moon Knight. I think Hawkeye was a little bit shorter. They might have been forty ish minute episodes. Maybe shorter. So, Shield being that kind of in between show and scenes. So, I'm just going to say scenes. I guess I'm going to take away that and say moments. I don't think there's 10 scenes in She Hulk, but I don't I know the say, breakdown. Yeah, you'd be really stretching for, for one episode to hit 10 for scenes. For one episode. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm going to say the lawyer speech. This is a no particular order. Uh, the lawyer speech in the beginning, uh, I thought that was really cool. Rock throw into the sun slash push off cliff training montage balancing scenes. Cool. Titania kick slash fight scene. I loved it. Very short. It was way too scene, short. Yeah. Very, very, very short, which is a bummer. Also, Titania getting like arrested by normal dudes there for a second. I was like, are you serious? I'll make her yeah, look that weak. She's pretty weak. Pretty she needs weak to get this. power power brokered up or something. She needs to get buffed up or I hope recruits like the wrecking will. crew. I think she'll... I think she'll actually, it'll be like a few times. I think she'll like get some sort of super soldier steroids. I, I would like some and feuding. And like the She-Hulk will like also beat lot. her down like easily. And then she'll do it again and she'll beat her down Ooh. easily. And then like the fourth time she'll be like skyscraper, like jacked, kind of like Titania. I'd, um, I'd like that. Not skyscraper, and, but you know, like 12 but I feet would, tall. I would also like really dig if it's like at the end, then it's like her and either her and Absorbing Man, right? Her and her hubby. Or, like, the whole Wrecking Crew is there, and they really give, like, She-Hulk just, like, almost loses, and then maybe Bruce shows up to help her out, and then they beat the Wrecking Crew. That'd be so cool uh, to me as a finale, I think, because I love the Wrecking Crew. I want them. I want them in there. Um, so, Titania kick fight scene. Uh, the Inside Out reference slash the Buzzsaw Room. Uh, I don't know. I liked Inside Out as a movie. It was kind of cool. I know Disney was just referencing themselves at that point, but I liked it. Uh, Bruce Banner, Tony Stark, bar scene. That was cool. I liked I like the bar, seeing that they made that. That's pretty neat. Also seeing the uh, Age of Ultron, first version of Ultron head, and the Gladiator Hulk oh, helmet yeah. inside. It was really cool. The, yeah, the Ultron head. The uh, Sakarian ship dropping down, and then the subsequent car crash. Cool, cool seeing the Sakarian ship. So, Sakarian uh, ship, I want to, like, I will say, there's been, like, a lot of complaints about this show online. Um, one of them was, like, the CGI difference between Thor Ragnarok and the same Sakarian ship in this and one it's the same like as Bruce says it's like the same class of vessel but obviously the one we That's see in Thor Ragnarok is like Grandmasters or whatever yeah, isn't it like orange and yellow yeah it's not like so it's like purple, colored differently gray. and yeah, then the also I was expecting like a chase scene or something because people were making a big deal of it and we get to that scene and the ship is literally visible for about a second it literally, it's literally like, so comes short. down and then, like, you know, spoiler, she, like, rolls the vehicle or whatever. Um, so, like, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, like, going to come down. They're going to stop and, like, get out and, like, talk to somebody or something. But, like, no, oh. that doesn't ever happen. So, like, you Instant literally have crash, to, like, frame baby. by frame catch it just to be like, oh, yeah, bad CGI on that. And I was like, you don't, I don't even get to notice it. Bad CGI, like, personally. maybe my TV's refresh rate is, like, you know 10 frames per second or something but i didn't even notice it being like Baby. anything like i noticed it like pulled um, down and i was like oh yep spaceship and then they crash yeah you and see, you see like, it for such mm, a little amount of time there's no How? air vents when previous models had air vents and the cgi artist couldn't even put air vents in there hmm Ugh, that's some like Battlestar Galactica like mouth breather nerd nitpicking on spaceships right there. Ugh. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah. I a lot of the complaints I've seen online, I'm just like I did not see it when I watched. Um, it's dumb. I will say, first episode um, seemed like obviously they have to do the whole, set up. Uh, set up thing. Yeah, you. Yeah, you set up. But it just I'm almost it felt my list here. Really short because. 
because like there like nothing ended ended up happening, right? Well, yeah, nothing actually happened. That was that's like the rough. Well, I guess the the implication at the end is that the world knows she right, right. She has to deal with that next episode. I assume like that's really about it. Like we established the character, we did their origin, and now they can go do superhero things. Uh, okay, so number seven, a normal amount of rage. Maybe that's kind of part of the rock throw fun scene, whatever. But the the air horn and then her yelling is just funny. Uh, fourth wall breaks. Those aren't scenes; they're moments. But I still like them. Uh, the ladies' night bar slash uh, getting tackled uh, also fun. I liked the ladies all like coming to her help, being like, "Oh my gosh, what happened?" All that stuff. Uh, he's not worth it. That was hilarious. Um, and then don't take this as an insult, uh, but scene number 10, because I couldn't think of any others, uh, the credits. The credits actually do look good, though. I don't mean this as a, I was happy to see the credits, glad it's over. I like Shulk's character a lot, and I like the first episode. Um, oh, the they do, just had so cool yeah, art. the credits, you're talking about, like, they do, they like, really, a sketch out. They do court scene-type sketches yeah. of everything, and I really, really liked that. So, like, that was awesome. And they, it's not a scene, so, like, spoiler, like they do change every episode, so... Oh, like, cool. Yeah. There's been like movies and stuff that have done this, but I've never seen them do it like on episode by episode basis that I can remember at least. I like that a lot. That's and dope. It, yeah, it is cool that they well, actually they kind of did that true. during uh, Mandalorian. No, did they not? Mandalorian. Yeah, I was going to say Mandalorian definitely did like the concept art. Yeah. A concept. Yeah. It was yeah, definitely concept. So I was going to say, I was going to say I've never seen it before, but yeah, that is exactly where I've seen it before. So that yep. might just be like a Disney thing, but it is cool. Um, it's not necessarily concept art. It's more like fill in the gap kind of stuff for She-Hulk. Whereas Mandalorian's oh, sure. is like legitimately just concept art of like stuff that you already saw. Um, like the She-Hulk stuff is kind of like stuff that would happen in the background or that they didn't end up filming from what I th- I've seen. I think that's what it, they're going for. Yeah. Yeah. I've been enjoying it. I'll say, like, um, I don't know if this was episode one or episode two, but there's, like, an Easter egg where it says, uh, it's, like, a newspaper clipping, and it says, like, man with metal claws gets in bar fight. And so that was one of my favorite moments. I was like, ooh, could it be? Could it be? Oh, that must that must be episode two, because I have not seen that yet. Okay. Man with metal claws gets in bar fight. Oh, man. It's, like, a very split second, like, newspaper I like that. that That's really cool. Ooh. But, like, ooh. If you, yeah, if you pause it. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, I I actually kind of like how Banner's Hulk is now. Like, he seems frustrated because, like, uh, obviously, like, his cousin's, like, handling the Hulk transformation, like, way better. But I'm like, well, I think like, it's he, more of, like, super messed up because he didn't grow up well. And then you see her parents and her parents are, like, super well adjusted and, like, friendly and nice. And it's like, like yeah, thing, she right? learned how like... to handle emotions because she had good parents and Bruce didn't. So it makes sense why it took him 15 I years to control the whole thing. I would take this more so as like she's like a lawyer. So she's like she's used to control. Oh, that right? too. She's yeah. used to like being at you large in Yeah, charge. you can't like let your emotions like get the exactly, best of get you the and best freak you. out. Sure. Exactly. So that's what I would say. More so like that. And I get it because like he is the expert on it. Like there's no one else but him. I understand his frustration too. And I think if I were him, I would also be mad. I'm like, look, I'm literally the professional at this. But it's like, but she is also different, you know? I think there's there should have been give and take on both sides. And I, I really hate it when people can't talk like normal human beings to each other and figure it out. But also, they both turn into giant range monsters. So, like, what, what did you yeah. expect, you know, to have a normal conversation? Despite the fact they're both clearly very smart in different ways, uh, they should have been able to. But uh, no, they're still human beings that don't quite... Yeah, it's 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 always rough to like see that. I've I've seen it so many TV shows where I'm like, just like talk, just like, yeah. especially in Moon Knight. In Moon like, Knight, I was so like, many... just talk with Layla. Mark <laughs> so... and Layla need to sit down for like an hour and a half. So and many just movies it and out. TV shows are entirely premised on the fact that like people won't just explain what happened oh, or like yeah. let the other person explain what happened, and it's like so man, annoying. This entire plot just would not happen in most like real life situations if people like weren't as maladjusted as these characters are portraying people to be. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, uh, the show's getting a little long in the tooth. We uh, have some questions from Malcolm Rush real quick. It looks like we will never get a boys hero click set. Please give substitute hero clicks figures for each of the main characters from the boys. Why did you pick those hero clicks to represent the main characters from the boys? Uh, Simi and I just each chose one character from the boys side and then one character that was like a superhero slash a seven character. We're not like choosing that many characters, like an insane amount. 
I'm not going to make a whole custom set, but I think these are dials that if you made custom sculpts for those characters, I think these dials would fit really well if you did a sculpt swap. So Simeon, uh, you want to hit me with your boys, uh, the boys team character or yeah. seven, doesn't matter, whoever you want to so, make first. I went with the, the female, or as she's known in the show, Kimiko Mayashiro? I, I don't know. I, I didn't know her last name, but Kimiko, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they give her a last name, honestly, but that's what this fandom article is saying. Um, uh, sure. Yeah, just known as the female in the comics. Um, because her favorite maneuver in the comics is literally just ripping people's faces like right off their body, Yeah. Uh, I went with Lady Deathstrike and... Uh, ah, the very better good. of the two Lady Death Strikes. So, yeah, because like Lady Death Strike could also definitely rip a face off. It just like instantly sounds fitting, though. Yeah. I like that. Um, I'm gonna pretend like the point value like has been legacy card, so I'm not gonna bother to saying what the point value is. Uh, but she's got improved movement through elevated terrain, hindering, and characters, which is pretty good for Kamiko. I think she can definitely like traverse elevated and through characters like fairly well she's pretty nimble um yeah. she has a trait that is blades claws fangs can't be targeted by incapacitate and mind control uh, that's not like super flavorful but whatever kind of works and then uh flurry she's got a special speed power that's flurry when she uses it before making a second attack she may use sidestep as a free action so kind of like bouncing between characters with like a flurry mm -hmm. that's on clicks two three and five uh, and then she has a special attack power on clicks 1, 2, and 6, and 7. And that is cutting with force exertion. When Lady Death Strike uses Blades Claws Fangs after the result of her D6 roll, or after the res if the result of her D6 roll is lower than her printed damage value, hit characters are dealt one penetrating damage after actions resolve. So uh, her damage value for half of her dial is 3, and then the other half is 2. So when she has those powers, it's always dealing like the better amount Okay, do yeah. that. Nice. I would say your point value, but it's uh, it's really high for disgustingly her. high. Yeah, it's 112 <laughs> points for. Clicks. She's got Ugh. combat reflexes, shape change, and then instantly click two has regen. Never oh, regen wow. from click two, um, but then she on click four she also has regen. Uh, click three she has combat reflexes with a 16. Uh, two clicks of 16 combat reflexes on clicks 5 and 6, and then a 15 regen. So technically, she can always regen back to click 1. You just have to be real lucky or something. That's so it's interesting. I mean, regen makes sense, obviously. Uh, the character from the boys I chose is the leader of the boys, Billy Butcher. Uh, Billy Butcher, what a, what a fun little Australian man that he is. I uh, Known for great style of trench coats and not fully lacing up his boots. Also, sleep on the floor and in an all-around sad, mean, alcoholic guy. Uh, no, I chose Baron Zemo from the Marvel Studios Disney Plus set, specifically 028. I think he works really well with how he is as a character. So he's got, you know, top three clicks, stealth, bottom three, plasticity. I think he is just kind of working in the shadows. Like, that's Billy's thing. Full dial of precision strike, six range, two targets, having a gun, whatever. Uh, 17 defense, mastermind, top dial. He kind of puts people on his own crew in danger for himself uh, a lot of the time. Um, so I think the Mastermind fits Billy. But I mostly like that he has the Outwit Perplex special damage power. And when he uses it to target a, an opposing character, after resolutions roll d6, 5 or 6, deal 1 penetrating damage to an opposing character that is adjacent to the targeted character. Uh, the superpower of the boys is like blackmail. So having Outwit Perplex and this extra little special part to me... Kind of fits Billy. I don't know. I really like this dial. Um, besides this one, I also thought of for like a compound E type version of Billy Butcher. Also, I guess potential spoilers, everybody, for The Boys Season 3, I guess. Um, I was thinking maybe the Lex Luthor uh, super cocktail version where he's like uh, earthbound neutralized and just outwit until halfway through his dial. He gets like hypersonic speed, up click and all that crazy stuff. Yeah, but I like this version sure. of just like a normal, a normal Billy. I don't know. Thought it was kind of fun dial. Uh, but all right, Simeon, you're seven slash. Yeah. Or so for character. like the, I went with a, a member of the seven. Uh, so I tried to do um because the whole seven is mostly just the Justice League. It's like worse versions of the Justice Basically, League. Basically, yeah. Um, weaker versions, I should say. Um, so I went with Starlight, who isn't a classical member of the Justice League. Uh, she's got like 
light beam kind of powers. Um, and so I had to go with uh, Photon because that's the only like oh, light sure. emitting that female sense. that I could really think of. Uh, so I went the the super air from Avengers of Infinity, uh, Monica Rambo. I could have gone with like the newer Monica Rambos or a Captain Marvel because that's similar. But I think this one's pretty pretty close. Um, I would have liked like pulse wave kind of thing, but she does have uh, leadership shape change. When she rolls for either and succeeds after resolutions, you may place her within X squares in line of fire where X is the result. So Photon's definitely like a faster version of um, Starlight. Starlight's, I don't know, she can fly, but it's like not good. It's not no, like a, she just all she did was like hover in the yeah, show. Yeah, she kind of like, like hover a little, a little bit. Um, but like Photon's got hypersonic for the first two clicks and then phasing. So neither of those are Starlight powers, but just because of the aesthetic and then the uh, psychic blast and like leadership shape change kind of stuff. I think she does like a lot of like shape changing in this in the show. She does a lot of like incognito mode kind of stuff. Yeah, man, um, she wears like a hoodie and a baseball cap. Yeah, at one point. super <laughs> impossible to like tell who that is. Um, of course. And then like her little like laser beams. So Photon has six range. Um, Starlight's little light show beam, whatever you want to call it, are more kind of like incapacitating. But I think Psychic yeah. Blast works too. They could definitely kill a human. Maybe just not like a member of the seven specifically. Um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, and then when she attacks characters of 100 points or more, you may choose to modify attack or damage plus one. So, yeah. Hmm. Kind of like a bad ranged combat expert. Okay, that's pretty fitting. I did not choose a member of the seven. I went with a member of Payback, and I went with my boy, Soldier Boy. Uh, for this dial... I chose Wolverine and the X-Men 048 War Star. I think this is pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, I put into the search engine Charge and Pulse Wave. Yeah. Uh, so he starts off. He's got Charge, Super Strength, 18 Defense, Invincible, 4 Damage. He's got a full dial of Battle Fear, which, now that I see that, does not make a whole lot of sense with his Pulse Wave down dial. We're going to ignore <laughs> it for right now. I don't know how. I don't know how it works either, um, but... I think it, it used to. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Okay. So right. oh, War Star begins Benigni the game with the B attached. Yeah. When he's got the doesn't get Battle, doesn't get Battle yeah. Fury. Cool. So that's that's how it works. So he's charged. He's super strength. Eventually, Battle Fury when Benny dies, which I and well, when he's attached, anyways. He's got big reducer. Soldier Boy tanks damage super well. Uh, also, the shield, all that stuff. Super strength. He needs super strength to pick up the shield. He clearly has some form of super strength. He's just a like, charge dude. Pulse wave is his big end all. You know, take away your powers, blow people up. But uh, then he's got this whole thing that he like can you know take Benny off. And so I guess Benny is just going to be gunpowder. Um, I think that is fine. Gunpowder doesn't have any real toughness abilities. Really, he just can like shoot real well. Benny's got eight range. Pulse wave. You can give him a power action, uh, and then Warstar can be moved as a free action. I think this fits just gunpowder, just helping um, Soldier Boy move. Super senses, find enough defense, outwit, find enough uh, attack power. You could say he's outwitting because he's bouncing bullets around off stuff or something. But yeah, I think this Warstar dial works. For all the dials I kind of looked through, it was between... There were some that had, like, hypersonic mixed in, and then, like, blades mixed in. I'm like, nah, I didn't really want those. I just wanted, like, charge, super strength a good reducer, and then Pulse Wave. So I think this War Star fits really, really well. So yeah, I like it for uh, for Soldier Boy. All right. Those are all the questions we have. Like we said earlier, guys, Discord has a ton of great value to it, and you get access to that at the $5 tier. So the Patreon has a ton of awesome value. More specifically, you can get the cool Chainsaw Chip shirts if you join any tier, $25 or above. Those are only available for the next two months after September. They're going to be locked away in the vault. They might come out later, but uh, right now it's the only way to get the cool Chainsaw Chip shirt. And we'll probably be posting that on our socials here soon. Really quickly, shouting out all our twenty-five, or sorry, all our $15 and above patrons. Darth Jono, 22. Thank you for correcting me on how to pronounce your name. Uh, apologies. But Darth Jono, 22. Ethan Jacobs, Matt Reed, Alex Morris, and Chance McCall. Thank you guys so much for supporting us on Patreon at these high tiers. We super appreciate it. We use it to make the show sound as good as it does, make the YouTube videos look as good as they do, and keep pumping out this quality HeroClix content. Thank you guys so much 
for supporting us. Yeah. And I believe that is all. That's all the questions that I, I've that's, seen. That's all the things. I think that's it. Uh, we uh, talked tarot it's, cards. Uh, if you know, you tarot cards. Uh, yeah, if, if you want some tarot cards, if you want to ask questions, um, Cool Stuff Inc. has a uh, contact us page, so you, you can ask them questions for sure. Uh, but yeah, you should go to Cool Stuff Inc. You can find the tarot cards there. They've got them all split up if you want to buy them individually. I don't suggest it because it ends up being quite a bit more expensive. But, um, yeah, you can, you can at least use those to price gauge if you're buying into the set, if you want to buy a brick or a case, or if you want to buy, like, the starter, but you're not planning on using any tarot cards. You can use Cool Stuff Inc. to kind of price match, uh, let people know what you think they're worth, the, those tarot cards. Um but yeah, they've got the whole sets up now. I don't think it was last time we recorded, but uh, it's fully up now. All the figures, all the dials, uh, everything is still available. There's only a few things that have actually been sold out so far. So yeah, oh, nice. check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how would six uh, people humor? think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic trails.